dial up the call, Graham. Okay, guys, I'm on, we already on, so uh, um, guys, you all, you all mind our technical difficulties as we try to add both Graham Betterford and also um, um, and also C. Allen Johnson. You see C. Allen Johnson already um, is with us, and so we just, uh, we, we're going to add Graham Betterford uh, very quickly um, by, by, um, um, by phone. And so please, I want to say good afternoon, good afternoon to all of you guys. We're talking economics today, we're talking national ownership. And uh, I want to say uh, welcome to National Access. Yeah. Graham. Hey. What's happening? Hold, hold one second, Graham. I'll let you know when they come in, eh? Yeah, yeah. So, guys, we also have, we also have Graham Betterford with us already. So, we have C. Allen Johnson, Graham Betterford. We're talking the future of economics in the Bahamas. We, um, Graham, we started last evening talking about um, the fact that we have no economy based on all that has already happened. You and I talked earlier today about the um, about the crash, the economic crash that the Bahamas has gone through. So I want to welcome all the Bahamians and those of you who, who follow National Access, those of you who follow Operation Sovereign Bahamas. We know um, C. Allen Johnson about the amount of work we have to do now. That we are where we are. There's no there's no joke in my mind that the Bahamas are the place we've never been before. And so this is a this is a weird day for me, in that um, we don't do National Access on Saturdays, but. Um, of course, nothing is natural anymore in our country. Everything is either locked down, sped up. I don't know, but you see, how is it in Grand Bahama? Uh, it's actually raining. It's uh, raining here. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of people under some additional distress, taking into effect that we just had most of the tops torn off with the hurricane, mm -hmm. uh, what is it, Aisia or whatever the name is. So now it's raining. It's been raining off and on since then. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Grandmother Foot. Oh, good afternoon, uh, Adrian. Okay, so guys, this is, um, we have not done this for a minute. Um, the last time we did, I think, um, K, um, we had KCX with us, uh, C. Allen. I think the last time we did this, we had KCX and we had probably one or two others, but um, since we would have done this the last time, because of, of the state that the country is in, uh, we've never been to the place where our entire tourism economy has been shut down for this long. Um, if you ask the average person uh, where, where the income is coming from, those in cabinet, those in any aspect of leadership, the prime minister would have appointed uh, a committee, an economic council, to give us some ideas on where we can actually go. I know many of you will get sarcastic and facetious about the economic council because none of you know exactly where that, where that thing is right now. Uh, we are just in a weird place. And uh, we have never been here before, but there's hope. And that's kind of the reason why we're talking today. So let me just say to everybody, those of you who are out there, those of you who listen to uh, um, National Access, um, we, we've been doing it for a while. And the song that we played over this country, Sea Island, like you know, is like the rushing of a mighty wind. It seems as if the wind has blown. It seems as if we've come to the place where um, the, the conversation about the economy, we said that this is the year of big events. And if this is the year of big events, we, we have to all be honest about the fact that the coronavirus is not the big event. The big event is the economy of our country moving forward. How are the Bahamian people going to eat? What are we going to do to survive this process? How are we going to eat? Are the persons who have no electrical um, power in their homes, uh, how are they going to have food? Um, Shona, do me a favor, please. Um, can you tag all of my people, Shona, so that they will know that we... We are Terry Miller. Good afternoon to you, my dear. My God, look at Terry. Uh, but Shona, can you tag everybody for me, please? And, and, and those of you who are on already, can you please begin to tag folks and let them know that this is probably the best conversation that we're going to be having uh, when it comes to national access um, during this lockdown period. You need to know exactly what's next. You need to know how we're going to be handling uh, these situations moving forward. The best people to have this conversation with, many of you may not like their voices. Because after a while, our voices, C. Allen, um, 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 Graham Weatherford, our voices become tiring to people. They get tired of hearing us. But the best voices, we become epistles, we become prophets to all that's happening. So it's time for them to really begin to listen. Because um, Graham Weatherford, all that you've said has come to pass. C. Allen, all that you would have said has come to pass. And um, because what we've done, what we've been saying, all that KCX has said has come to pass. We've come to a place now, we've come to our Ebenezer. 
We are at a place now where the country is at its knees. Are we prepared to sit back and watch it? And so let's come with some ideas today. Let's have a, let's have a straight up conversation. I don't care how it comes out raw. Um, I don't care how it comes out rank. The bottom line in this hour conversation, we must be real about where we are as a country. We must be real. Um, I don't know whether or not the government is telling us the truth. If the government tells me the truth about the um, corona numbers, they sure as hell lie to me about the numbers in the container. They lie to me. I, I keep hearing stories about bird, bodies burned in Abaco. I don't know. I've never seen the body burned before. But I'm hearing stories from defense force officers, from police officers, persons who would have had opportunity to be around Abaco. If you lie to me, the point I'm making, about the numbers in Abaco, could it be you can lie to me about the corona numbers? Can you lie to me about a trip that, that, that Bill Gates would have taken? Can you lie to me about all the other things that's happening? Can it be that all the things are, that, 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 that the government has given us, could, could it be that those things are fictitious? I don't know if they are, but I'm only throwing it out the other day before we start. We have to, and, and see, I know, Graham, there's some things you don't like to dabble in, but I'm putting the whole thing out the other day because if we're going to talk economics, if we're going to talk the future of our country, we don't know what's going to happen when it's time for our children to go back to school in September. We have no idea. If we go by, if we, if we go by, if we go by what the government says, so let's let's talk, guys. Um, um everybody, please welcome Graham. Please welcome Graham, and let's welcome um, Adrian. Um, see Alan Johnson. Go ahead, buddy. Adrian, let me explain. I know exactly what's going to happen. Sixteen thousand people. How many percent? How many? Sixteen. One six. One six thousand. Sixteen thousand are at the point where BPL will no longer provide them electricity. And when you have no electricity, and I could pretty much begin and end on this one, see Alan and everybody will tell you, you will have no digital or conceptual economy. You'll have no country. You can't grow a tomato unless you have a water pump to pump the water to water the tomato. So if we don't get affordable, sustainable energy security, you're finished. And that's how I'd like to open. Well, let, let me let me go back to the let me go back to the energy uh, what you said about the individual. You know, I I, I understand, and 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 oftentimes I whenever a, a government official gives any information, I trust but I verify. And after verifying, I understand the sixteen thousand individuals that Graham spoke of had nothing to do with Dorian. Absolutely, and that during uh, COVID, it has nothing to do with COVID. Those individuals that were literally would be of, would have been scheduled for disconnect had COVID not showed up. And so now, what we have to do is we have to contextualize what was happening. What happened? Those individuals that were, that was past due and owed a substantial amount of money before the month of March. Uh, we didn't move into COVID until uh, until the month of March. And so when you begin to go uh, for the March, April, May, June, and July, for those individuals that have not been working for those uh, additional months, if you count them, I want people to count them, the month of March, the month of April, the month of May, the month of June, the month of July, and now we're in the month of August. And so at minimum, you had individuals who have not been working for five months, and they have not been able to be in the position to make payments, considering that we could take uh, also, statements made that the typical behemoth do not have six months of, of, of money reserve. The individuals uh, are already in, in the hotels and other places due to predatory lending practices is completely maxed out by deduction from their payroll. Now, they have no payroll. They have no cash. So we can naturally assume that BPL, I think their, their, their numbers is for the entire Bahamas is about 120,000 or less homes. So we must assume that at least 50% or more of those homes have not been in a position to make payment. And so we could very easily look at the fact that we're not talking 16,000. We're talking 50 to 60,000 homes in the immediate that is facing some form of economic distress in, as far as energy security. And so, and, and, and so if BPL was to give us the list of individuals who have not made payments since March. Remember, they are still consuming electricity. They are still consuming liability. And so this is why I think BPL is uh, moving to put emphasis, at least give us the money you owed us before COVID so we could pay for whatever bills or whatever's happening. 
taken into effect that the BPL bond issue has collapsed and whatever monies that we have seen hundreds of millions of dollars spent and allocated uh, since the whole BPL saga began in 2017 and we have had nothing that's uh, worthwhile coming out of BPL. We, BPL has been destroying the economy before Dorian and before COVID. And, and uh, through this blackout, through its uh, 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 rolling blackouts, through its engine failures, whatever, even now today, BPL would say, oh, we have solved the energy generation, but now you have transmission and distribution on an archaic system. And this is why you're still experiencing blackouts and lightning strikes, et cetera. Those are not coming from the energy generation. Mm -hmm. They're coming from transmission and distribution. And so let's start, and I'll start this. It's 60,000 people, that is 60,000 at minimum. And I'd put it as much as 20, as 100,000 people in the Bahamas, 120,000 homes. I don't want, don't confuse with people because people are in those homes. More than one person is in those homes. As much as 100,000 yes. people by the end of this month, 100,000 homes by the end of this month will be facing uh, economic, dis I mean, energy uh, uh, insecurity. Okay, and so if, 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 we, if we look at that amount of persons who, who, are, who are going to be facing energy insecurity, the question that we have to then ask is, um, uh, what is the uh, what is the what is the solution? What is the cure? Because if you talk to Donovan Donovan Moxie, the chairman of BPL, he has to give you the story that is politically correct. He has to give you the story that one, uh, we need the people to pay their bills. We need the people to pay their light bills. You said, see, Alan Johnson, uh, this happened prior to to COVID nineteen. We were having um, they were having problems collecting money from persons paying their bills way before way before COVID nineteen, way before Dorian. People weren't, they weren't paying the electrical bills. And if that be true, then that must mean that the houses were distressed way before those two major events. People were in peril long before Dorian, long before uh, uh, COVID-19. We have been in a situation for a very long time where most behemoths could not make ends meet. Now, these things are basically revealed and magnified the reality of what it is. And so, now they can't pay their bill. What's the solution, I'm um, 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 Graham Rutherford? Now that BP is faced with this astronomical approach of not being able to, um, to pay off. We borrowed money for Watsilla. We borrowed money. Um, see, Alan, you and I break the news about Palm, um, not Palm Hill, but the other lady who break off running to, um, to Georgia. We broke the news about um, the situation in BPL. The bottom line is, uh, what did BPL do now? And how do the people keep their lights on? Graham, let's start with you. Well, um, I don't know. Received the nine hundred thousand dollars that Pamela Hill and Power Secure were given to assess and tell us what was wrong with the energy sector. Yes. Or are we are we now asked for free to consult to the economic recovery team and subcommittee? You see, it's really sad that you take the experts, right, mm -hmm. and you abuse them and prostitute them locally and try to get the answers. And then you give those answers to a foreigner to come and do the installation. I'll give you a case. And see, Alan, could, he'll give you more specific on the numbers than me because I don't have the time to study it because I'm busy doing some other things that I can't tell you. But here's what I will say. There's no way in heck you could have 40 homes in Ragged Island. And these are small homes. These aren't life or key homes. These are small homes. No way you could spend more than $10,000 cost on providing them some form of energy from solar. That would be forty. That'd be four hundred thousand dollars at ten grand times forty homes. How did you get to three million dollars? Oh and you would be putting you would be putting a small system on each home. I would assume that wouldn't require transformers, lamp poles wires, and all the distribution that C. Allen spoke about that can be susceptible and destroyed by hurricanes. You see, by putting solar 3 million on the ground somewhere, who knows what it costs? We need an independent study, forensic audit on that, to see what it really costs. And then you connect that up to the lamp poles and wires, and you send the solar power to the people's homes, supplemented by diesel generator at night, etc. But they haven't fixed all the lamp poles and wires. So you spend $3 million and you still can't get the electricity to the home. But you see, we said do solar. 
and the Rocky Mountain guys came. I said, years ago, this should be an industry owned, operated, and controlled 100% by Bahamians only. You bring in the foreigner. Well, that's okay. A 30-some-year-old young man hooked up all the panels on the stadium. That was a million watts, a megawatt, just shy of it, of course. But he couldn't hook up a couple homes in Ragged Island. My God. So you tell them, we ain't consulting for free. We want to see their detailed plan, like C. Allen said, from the economic advisory team. And then we'll critique it and show them where it's wrong. See, I tell you, they're sitting down for seven weeks now. And the only thing they could do is put up another subcommittee of the committee. And now you could ex- ex- you can expect a sub-subcommittee by November. They can't tell you the plan. Their plan is to sit back, pro- I assume, to sit back and wait on tourism to kick off. So they're waiting on Trump to fix us, eh? But the plan for 50 states will not work for 700 islands. Anyway, let's see how I'm tell you what he thinks about that. Oh, my God. Go ahead. But... Go ahead. <clears throat> See, the, what, what is happening in Ragged Island gives us uh, a need for what we should be demanding, accountability. First, I want people to remember what the primary goal <clears throat> or promise that was made in May of 2017. These are the words that was made, transparency, accountability, integrity, anti-corruption, and freedom of information. Those are embedded in my head because then I, I know them forward and backwards because that's what was promised and I, that's what I would expect it to be delivered. You know, uh, where you go from freedom of information, anti-corruption, integrity, accountability, <clears throat> or transparency, whatever order you put it, it was promised, but we have not gotten it. And so let me just, before I get to it, let me just say to people, you need no laws to be enacted for your government to be transparent. You do not need laws to force your government to be accountable. You do not need laws that forces your leaders to have integrity. You don't need laws to, to, to have people who are not corrupt. You don't need laws to provide access to information to the freedom of information. Come on, so when, man. Leadership says, when leadership says to you that I could only do these things with if I pass the law that makes me do it, then you need to rethink your leadership. And so when you go to Ragged Island and you look at what has been spent and we cannot see the contract, the heads of agreement, the deliverables, what are they, what are we paid for, what are we getting, how it works, you know, what is the strategy, then you have a problem. And so what we have to do is stop allowing them to hide these things. I cannot personally see and justify the three million dollars on Ragged Island, because it would cost significantly less to do microgrids or banking on that island with the homes that is there, or get some Telsa wall wall batteries or whatever else. So I would love an explanation of why we spent three million, what do we spend it for, to whom we spent it, the quality of the things we got, and authenticate. See, what happens is in, 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 in developed worlds, we understand the cost of things and we understand labor. And so there's no need to hide to say, oh, you know, this is conflated, inflated, or whatever. So we just need to ask them to tell us what's happening. Now let's come back to what is happening with, 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 with what we have to do concerning uh, the Bahamas. It says that you cannot manage what you cannot measure. And you cannot measure what you refuse to acknowledge. And so in essence, what we have to do is we need to have a complete audit, which should have been done on BPL. But we need to have an audit of every home in the Bahamas concerning their their connection to or their ability to connect to the grid. And that includes the shanty towns and everything that's functioning. We need to know every single building. Is, my understanding, there's much, there's much, maybe hundreds of, of buildings around New Providence and their family islands that's connected to the grid, that, but there's no means by which there's been needed for access to it. And the clearest way for this to be accomplished is almost in the immediate. BPL should know this is the amount of, of energy we, that we're generating, and this is the loss that occurs across the lines. And this is the energy that our meters say we have delivered. And somewhere between that, it would tell you what is missing. 
So if I'm generating, say, 300 megawatts, I have a 10% loss across the line, bringing me to 270. And according to my billing, I have 210. Then that means I'm missing 60 megawatts somewhere. And so then you give an accountability for what you are missing because, again, these okay, are things that, that, are that, is, that, is after, that is after an audit. Let me ask you a question, Tia. No, no, no. That's, no I'm telling you, you can't fix you can't, you can't fix it because the point is that we need to know how many, we need to know every home in the Bahamas that is connected or need to be connected so we can know the level of distress we have in the country. Remember, okay. we are now talking about going to digital school and everything else. So it isn't just the people we're disconnecting that's under distress, you know. There's people that's been disconnected maybe for months or years that are still also in distress. No, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm not disagreeing. I'm agreeing with you. But what I, want to, what I wanted to ask you, what level of priority would you put on electrical generation at this stage? Um, what behemoths have to pay for electricity? Where would you put that on a scale from 1 to 10 in terms of our priority and, 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 and restoring the country? Where would you put electric, electricity? Let me first answer Adrian Ramsey. The easiest thing for you to do is to ask what is called a convoluted and conflated question. And the best way to answer the question you ask, and ragged at it. I didn't see Adrian Ramsey on the question, by the way. No, right. I'm saying to him, let me tell you what you do. Clearly, transparency and accountability and anti-corruption and freedom of information uh -huh. and integrity, this meets all of those thresholds, which is not being expressed. And how do I know their plan for the mm -hmm. future? As far as I know, and as far as you know, unless you can provide some information, they only they spent $3 million to generate power for 20 homes. They didn't even put enough energy there for all of the homes. And I say, if they did, prove it. See, your ignorance can't be superior to my ignorance. Can't. It can't. See, now, see Alan, that is, that is a funny statement because they may have only put enough power there to have five homes if those homes have central air conditioning. You're correct. And so we didn't get, like you said, we never got the head of agreement that, or any documentation to tell us what they were going to do. And so it's like you're saying, see, Alan, you always say the right thing. We can't decide what they've done. It's like you're trying to decide where you're going and you ain't know where you is and where you've been. It's the same thing. Wow. You get no information, so you can't make a sensible statement right. or accusation. Right. And this is and that's right. This is why I don't like to have debate. I don't like to have debate with people who say my ignorance is superior to your ignorance. Ignorance is ignorance. And we yeah. can cure it with the right information. And so when you come back to I, what's your question again about the what what you, you yeah, we, we, um, how, how, do we, how do we prioritize it? You're, well, yours, Adrian was but, saying on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most important, where does energy security fit in? It fits in at 10, Adrian. Wow. 11. 11. And, it's and off the scale. No, the, the, let, me, again. <laughs> let me explain to you. Thank you, Z. We have, people, we have people talking about the green economy, the orange economy, the blue economy, the knowledge economy, the conceptual economy, and the digital economy. The, each one of those is at minimum 70% to as much as 92% dependent upon electricity or energy, as you put it. And so we already saw the detriment, the, the damage that has been done to our economy over the last decade by the efficiency or the inefficiency of, uh, of BPL. And so here it is in a world where the world is aggressively for the developed nations and developing nations is moving to be sub 10 cents uh, to be competitive. We are between 40 and 50 cents. And when you count the inefficiencies, we may be as much as 60 percent because the fact is that you must understand that your cost of electricity must also incorporate the impact of, ha of having interruptions and non-generation of non-delivery of electricity to your business. It isn't just a light bill. When you turn off the when you turn off the uh, 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 the the, the uh, when you turn off the power to my business, those losses as part of my business expense that actually directly affects for, to my energy generation. Okay. And and you also so, have to you have to include the Allen. You have to include if they do are so lucky as to have a diesel generator, they got to pay for the mechanic. 
mechanics, the generator, the maintenance, the fuel, and like you said, the loss of revenue from sales that weren't made. The, the, each, every one of the, the foreign direct, the foreign direct investor always says two things in the Bahamas: the cost of electricity and the labor cost hinder people from doing business. Well, they're going to try fix the energy costs, whatever way they're planning right now. Uh, and, and you know, there's you could privatize, nationalize, and all kind of foolishness. But they're also going to get the labor down too, because if we mash up this currency to fifty cents on the dollar. You now can get a <clears throat> cheap labor because an American come here with a hundred dollars and get a two hundred value. Oh, so, so, so uh, let, let's give the government some credit. Let, let me see if I can justify something that Minister did right, or something that Desmond Desmond Bannister did right. He is saying, guys, that we kicked the can of the electricity down the road for far too long. So they taking the bloody approach of trying to fix it by going with Botella, bringing nine new generators in, and they decided that they um. Bear in mind that we still use a bunk of fuel. Bear in mind that the people still pay it. Um, they have double in fees, despite the fact that they're putting in these brand new generators. Are they putting in generators to keep us on, or for future generations? And so let's give them. Let's let's say the government is taking on the heavy the heavy load of fixing uh, of fixing BPL. Are they doing it the right way? No, they actually did. The, they did stupidity. John Boswick said years ago in an energy forum by the Chamber of Commerce, and I was one of the panelists, so was Sean Bach, but he said, float a barge in here. It's you floating barge. Electricity down, you'll LNG, liquid natural gas, like what you cook with, similar, protein. You float liquid um, natural gas barge here, and you get your energy cost down to 19 cents, half price. So if you cut the $400 million a year you spend in fuel for generator in half, you would have $200 million savings every year. So in five years, how much you saved? A wow. billion dollars. That's enough money to solarize every home. Well, do plenty solar, and that would lower your 19 cents even further. And that's what we discussed four years ago. But they didn't do that because somebody makes money selling fuel. And I suspect they may be FNM and PLP. And they laugh at you every year with that renewable diesel and bunker C, 400 million. We have renewable energy. It's called fossil fuel. They make four hundred million a year. Two people here run things. Fuel at one point one billion a year. Four hundred million of that is just for your lights. And the guy with one point five billion bringing food in, to which you pay twelve percent VAT, which is what two three hundred million a year on tax on your food. We ain't even talking about duty, customs, entry fee, road tax for the container. You know the list. Okay. It's a sick set of rulers. We trying to we trying to change let, the system. Me, what, no, what, no, what, 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 to change the system. To change the system, here's the point, and, and, and I, want, I just want people to understand that LNG is still fossil fuel. LNG comes from the same carbon-based type environment. But essentially, the first thing we have to do is it goes back to the audit of every single home in the Bahamas. And so, yes, John Boswick plant would have provided what is called temporary relief, but it would not have brought in perspective, the sub 10 cents that we need to be competitive on the, on the, global, in the global marketplace. And so the, but what you have is we have the ability to first audit every single home to look at the energy consumption and lost going, going into every house. And whether that be for installation, taking them off the grid for stove, maybe going to uh, uh, a, a different type of uh, appliances, uh, uh, whether it be changing their ACs, changing their stove, changing their refrigerator, changing the lightings in the house, uh, insulating the attics, putting in attic fans. Uh, so what you have to do, the first thing you have to do is reduce the energy consumption in every single house in the Bahamas. Then at the same time, while you're doing that, you begin to create a strategy and with an anticipated future consumption goal even with the reduction that you would most likely meet. Let's use an example. If we could take another 100, 100 megabytes off the grid, but at the same time, look at building a 300 megabyte uh, uh, generation system using solar energy and a combination as uh, battery backups and uh, this would basically talk about a hybrid system and generation, whether it be LNG or whatever else you want to use. So in essence, now what you have is you have a, 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 a 
a strategy for production and, uh, and, 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 and backup and delivery and transmission. Now, at the same time, what you have is that during the daytime, it's just an example, we have the ability to utilize carbon offsets, uh, carbon credits, and a whole list of things to basically fund a, yeah. putting in a plant. And essentially what you do is you'll put in a 300 megawatt uh, uh, solar energy generation regime. That could be a combination of, of individual homes, microgrids, as well as a field generation, an energy uh, field generation. And so, and, and this is where you need the smart grid to manage the production of those and create what is called an on-demand uh, load balancing system. We why, are talking about a small- we, We've been talking about these same things for a very long time. Why is it that these things aren't being implemented? Um, if we check the bank account of all of the places who work at BPL, especially those who've just been, who've just been promoted to BPL, and I, I straight up, um, the places who, who run BPL, Rollins, Hasty, um, Bannister, all these people, is somebody still benefiting off the backs of the behemoth people with all of this heavy duty uh, um, stress they're putting on us? Because you can't tell me that these people don't love behemoths because they have to love behemoths to offer them the best. You can't tell me they're making, are they making money or are they making mistakes? Adrian, Adrian all the salaries at, 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 at the power company put together wouldn't even touch the fuel, the fuel is the killer. You're spending four hundred million a year on fuel. And well, ground, why wouldn't they change it? No, why would you change if you're making four hundred million dollars a year? Who's and making that? Is correct. Who's making that? You find <laughs> who sells the fuel? Who's making you know, it? Listen, it isn't. Alan told you. The Alan told you that, that he is hundred percent correct. All of our conversation is mute without statistical data. We could talk about going efficient. We could talk about not letting inefficient products into the country, right? Like air conditioning that, that's not efficient. But if you don't have the data, how many people are connected, what's their energy use now, and how can you even know? You, see, Alan, say what you said before, the trip, where right. you don't know where you started. What I'm saying is, see, what I'm saying is this. The problem we have is that people are offering us, offering us solutions to a problem they cannot define. So we are, we, are, we are buying solutions and then go looking for the problem. That's not how you do things. And so essentially, we must define the problem. It goes, how does one say, you, it goes, you cannot manage what you cannot measure. You cannot measure. And you cannot measure what you, can, what, uh, that, what you refuse to acknowledge or you can't, uh, 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 sorry, I'm doing it wrong. You cannot manage what you cannot measure, and you cannot measure what you refuse to acknowledge. And so the first thing we have to do is we have to actually begin to be able to give accountability and measure. What is it we're trying to fix? And what we do, and this is where the problem we have in governance, and we have political parties that keep telling us they're going to fix something, but they can't tell us what they're going to fix. And so the problem isn't, for me, the fuel or anything else. The problem is called the fantasy of fixing something to which you can't define. And so when you have people like the PLP and the DNA or even the FNM saying they're going to fix something, we must first have them tell us what is it you're going to fix. What are you hiding is this. Understand this. When I was shocked, I was floored when they made an announcement that BPL was being run on floppy disk. And my group of young men in that next meeting I had asked me, what is a floppy disk? And I told them, it can't, floppy disk is a device that can't hold one of the high definition pictures you're taking today. And they're running a multi-million dollar electrical plant on a 10 cent disk. Okay? And so it, it, it also... See, Alan, you remember when I did the video and I, I went in the back of my office and I put in the floppy drive and said I have all of the power company secrets on this floppy drive? <laughs> no, I haven't seen that word. Really it's no, but, you know, but, one, one, of the see, yeah, one of the challenges. No, I'm saying you just. Go ahead. How do you run a 21st century country with literally 20th century technology? They don't sell floppy disks, I, I guess, except in the Bahamas. Because most people don't remember 
the five and a quarter floppy disk, the three and a half floppy disk. Then we went to, uh, what is it, those RAM drive. Then we went to CD. We went to DVD, Blu-ray. Now we're in the cloud. But we're talking floppy disk from the 80s. This is from the 80s in the major upgrade. And so, and again, the problem with BPL or BEC is we are building an energy shanty town. BPL or BEC should have been dismantled, first intellectually dismantled, and then when we build a new system as BPL, then we should do it. Now, let me just side by this. I want you to remember BTC. There was a company called Patelco, which could not be sold without a referendum. So yes, multiple yes. governments, multiple Keep governments talking, Keep talking. Went, went through the act of uh, changing the company name that allow you to be distracted and assume that you could sell the assets. No assets, BPL, BTC, and other government corporations cannot be sold without a referendum. So the first thing they do is they change the name and they told you Patelco couldn't be sold without a referendum, but see, we changed the name to BTC and we sold it. When Patelco and BTC are still the same company, just name change. And so again, what I see happening with BEC on attempt was for the name change to happen to BPL because BEC cannot be sold without a referendum. And I'm saying that what you're saying a, is a, a, a house that a shanty down a house has been falling apart and some individuals understand the multi-billion dollar opportunity. Oh, Notice how they break up CL and audio when they start. Which is nothing more than BEC with with it, not more than BEC with a name change. And so, again, this is stealth and separating the human people. And so we must, but we must understand there can be no future in any country without energy. And so what okay. you have is some people in this country is trying to grab the future of the Bahamas by grabbing the energy source for which the future runs on. Okay, so guys, let's, 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 let's get to work. Let's, let's get to work. Uh, go, 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 go. Yes, go ahead. Adrian, really quick. You remember, you remember um, the lady when they said uh, had the makeup, um, money, the lipstick and stuff? Remember her name? Yes, yes. Donna lost one. Donna lost one. Okay. Okay. She was removed, right? Yes. Find out who was put there. Don't call names. Mark Olivesco. Um, Stephen Olivesco. Find out who will be making the decision on the purchase of fuel for these, the, and Obi Wilshkom explained this to me. He's been a multi-time cabinet minister, so he knows a little something on how these decisions go. I don't. He said decisions of this magnitude are given contracts for 20 years, maybe 30. Yes. And I said, oh my goodness, $400 million a year for 30 years, you're looking at $12 billion. And even if you come out with, um, you know, toenail clippings now make energy, you come out with some new solution, you will have to buy that contract out for $12 billion. Listen, or you'll have no, to but, that's not, but that's not true. No, but let me, this, see, I don't want us to believe that we can't break these contracts. See, and, and we, keep, we keep planting in the minds of behemoths as if though nothing can do. So we need to stop that. If we don't know, just don't say it. Because there's no such thing as a contract. It says, also said, that one administration can bind the hands of another administration. So that, that, this garbage they tell us and they teach us, that is not allowed. No, we've been indoctrinated to believe that. You can't bind future uh, administrations, okay? And so simply put is that the next administration has chosen not to challenge it. If we're paying for fuel and we have a system that does not need fuel, we don't need to buy the cancel no contract. If you say that I'll pay you $40 a barrel and I'm, I have a system that don't use oil, why do I have to negotiate and break in a contract with you? I just simply don't need to buy I oil. Just, I just buy buying it. I just buy buying I'm it. Simply saying, so, so, so when we start feeding into there's some contract or some binding or whatever. Yeah, that, yeah that's a lie. That's a lie. 
Right. That's so right. what I'm simply so, saying is, what, here's the, the, the point. The 21st century requires disruption. Let me use the word innovation and, and digital transformation. Disruption is not modifying the old. It's replacing it. And so what we are talking now is that we need a new energy Thank strategy you. that replaces the yeah. one that we have in place right now. Plain and simple. Exactly. Because it will pay for itself exactly. in less than three to five years utilizing the new technologies that exist today. But if you keep buying tar paper and buckets for the house, you never fix the house and it continuously costs you money. And so I say okay, the, 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 the system let's, let's, let's of let's generation let's, let's transmission... Let's let's no, just before I preach, I say this. The system of generation, transmission, and distribu distribution is dead. I say turn B, P, L, B, E, C, or whatever name you want to, over to a sovereign wealth fund with exactly. no that's political interference, okay? That's with no that's political interference. And so they that's... will look at building a new energy smart grid or whatever, and it'll be run as a not-for-profit, meaning that there, there's no dependence on government for no subsidies or whatever, anything else, and utilizing the latest strategies and the latest processes to which we will reduce energy and bring energy sovereignty and security to the behemoth people. What okay. do you do with the thousand people working there, Cialis? We will, yes, thing, we will yes, let's, let's, let's see. No, let me say that. No, let me say, just answer Graham, please, because a lot of time people allow these little things to allow us to become distracted. In the digital, yeah. in the 21st century, 50% of the jobs as we know it has disappeared. I used to say you will disappear. Has disappeared. But I want you to listen very carefully. If we had 250,000 jobs in the Bahamas, 125,000 jobs have disappeared. But here's the point. There is now a need for 150,000 jobs. It just doesn't require the same skill set that the old jobs have. Jobs don't disappear. They just, they just they're transformed. And so there's a net gain of jobs in the 21st century. In fact, we, if, if we address, uh, adopt a 21st century model, we don't have enough people in the Bahamas. I didn't say workers. I'm talking about the whole 400,000 people that will be needed to support this economy. And so, and so again, okay. we keep trying to modify and paint the old cars and the old vehicles when those things are junk. We cannot repair them. We cannot fix them. Okay. Put them in the museum. Okay, let's end, let's end on to let's end on to an earlier conversation. Um, part of what we discussed last evening, but um, um, I think part of it you mentioned earlier, see how and Johnson place. But um, guys, if you're on already, tag somebody, uh, let somebody know that we're on this afternoon rather than this evening. Uh, we want to talk um, um, very, very, very seriously about the natural outcome of not having an economy, the natural outcome of not having, having an income. Um, we're talking nationally now, the natural outcome of not having an income. What's the outcome for the Bahamas and not having an income from March? And we could, we, we could, we could, we could act as if all the money to be borrowed for emoluments and everything else is an income. That's not an income. We do not have an income as a country. Last evening, um, um, Graham Weatherford, we discussed how long can the Bahamas fetch on borrowed money? How long would it take for us to, 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 to have a reality check on where we are as a country? Because there are some people who sit in the civil servants. They sit as police officers. They sit as, as, as defense force officers, clerks, and they work in different aspects. Bahamas Air, they work in all these different areas. And they expect a paycheck every 27 of the month, some 26, some 28. They expect for money to come. For the most part, this money comes from taxes. But you can't tax somebody who don't have the money. What is the gray, black, blue picture down the street? And down the street may be a long street. It may not be East Street, C. Allen Johnson. This may be one of the side corners. What is the picture down the road on what this thing look like? How much time? And where are we going to get this money from? Because um, I want us to come into my desk on how we can get some money. But what is the reality? what's the reality picture right now, both of you? Alan, 
Go ahead, Graham. I have a pause, Graham. I have a pause. Go ahead, Graham. I have a pause. Go ahead, Graham. Well, I can show you what my reality is. My reality is that I have people telling me that the the man of the house has lost his job, and the lady of the house, she was in the hospital, and she lost her job. I wouldn't tell you that story, but you're seeing men, you're seeing both breadwinners lose their job. Now you're told you can go and collect some money. Sadly, we do have that PLP and F and M mindset. So somebody may get their money or their food grocery handout before someone else. I'm not sure, and if that's the case, it's really sad. But you're having you're having people that are going to have their lights cut off, their mortgage got a three month suspension. Did they get uh, a nine month suspension? Is the bank looking for that payment now, Adrian? What is the bank going to do? Give them another three months and another and another? Because I don't see this going away before Christmas. So the economic recovery team was put there with John Rowe, Wendy Gray, and the crew, <clears throat> and they did a subcommittee. And, you know, I weighed in on one of the subcommittees on energy. But they're not going to do what is needed, getting rid of the, the fuel monopoly, and getting rid of uh, the government involvement in ERCA. And, you know, it, it comes back to, to energy because it's super important. You know, right now, C. Allen could give you 10 different ways through technology this country could make money, from whether it's handling uh, solar to just handle and toggle data worth mega money. But you can't have it because you're going to pay 50 cents for the and kilowatt hour for the energy. So what is it you're going to do without energy? Exactly. I mean, tourism could open up in a different way. Uh, you're going to see the Airbnb slaughter the big, big resorts. I'm going to tell you that. It's going to open up at some point because of social crowding. And, you know, it, it, like C. Allen just said, the net jobs will be more. And let me give you one example, um, Adrian. I have a lady, I met a lady. She was working, uh, I met her at McDonald's. She was working at Atlantis, making three seventy-five or something like that a week. And she was in housekeeping. I met her and she said, come look at this. And I went, and I don't know this lady, but she knew my name from radio and social media. I went and looked at her car. She bought a cube. She had a Honda Accord. She sold it, bought a cube. And in the back was all the cleaning supplies. And it was well laid out in little trees, better than the hotel does. And she told me she is doing $1,400 a week. This was before the complete tourist lockdown, okay? When tourists were still coming she, to Airbnbs. And I said, what you doing? She said, I clean in Airbnbs now. Wow. And I was blown away. She's making more money after Corona in tourism than working in some slave ship, cleaning someone else's dream. She's now clean in her dream. So, you see, you have to think of the creative thinkers, but I'm not going to sit here. I'm not going to lay out the plan for free for a government that's willing to pay millions to consult with foreigners and not even give us the job. It's sick. And they probably are going to come to their knees, and then it's going to be time to listen to the Bahamian people finally. The day you see C. Allen give the information away free, I'll start throwing my ideas out there for free. I'm not doing it no more. Not well, I don't let like let my people. Let me, my people. Uh, let me go use ahead, an go analogy. Ahead, yeah. yeah, let me give you an analogy, right? Somebody comes to my house, and they, they see a wonderful meal prepared. They ask me for the ingredients. I have no problem in giving them a list of the ingredients. Because just because you have an ingredient, don't necessarily mean that you have the recipe. So when they get home, they have they realize that it's the recipe they needed. Now, what happens is on some occasions when people call, I would give them the recipe. Just because you have the recipe doesn't make you a good cook. My God, and so, my God, my God. And, and so what, I, what I'm simply saying is that it isn't a matter of uh, uh, giving people the ingredients. I've been giving the ingredients and recipes for almost two decades. The problem is that we've never had real cooks who can cook, but here's the problem now. We are a position right now yeah. in our, in our uh, uh, reality. We need now a master chef to supervise a kitchen of cooks because we need 
cooks who are going to be cooking various, they'd be specialized in various aspects of the meal we need to eat. But we need somebody that understands running a master kitchen to make sure that each of these cooks are producing at the level of quality that is necessary for presentation as this mm -hmm. meal. That the chef says, you know, if you see in a chef, you see in a chef supervising the kitchen, the, the cooks. And so essentially, we, so we need the ingredients, we need the recipe, we need a cooks, and we need some competent chefs to supervise or make sure it's executed. The problem is that we have been, it's been demonstrated that these individuals have had both the ingredients and the recipe, they have just not been able to cook. And so again, yeah. you, and you, you, they've heard it all the time, believe me, you could listen to the, to the ministers adjust their messages as they go along. You hear them say one thing, the next day you hear them say something else, because they are listening. But it's like they're running around with ingredients and recipes and inability to cook, an inability to supervise cooks. And so that's the problem we have. And so I'm saying is that we need better leadership if we are to come out of this. And so and the, the point is that, is that you cannot get leadership and, uh, that, 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 is, that doesn't possess the testicular fortitude or the ovarian audacity to do what is necessary. And, and just now, Adrian, I want you to give me three minutes, two minutes, two minutes. I want you to explain something because I hear people all the time. They come to me and they say that the prime minister has ultimate power. I just want for a moment to, to show you that we, if we had men with testicular fortitude and women with ovarian audacity, we can have the leadership we need. And here's what happens. And I would like to show somebody to show me where that is. It does not exist. The prime minister has ultimate power of appointment and disappointment. In cabinet, he is the first among equals. Among yes, the prime yes. minister is not the total vote of cabinet. He must have 50 plus one, plus, plus one, 50 percent plus one, to make any decision for it to be consensus of cabinet. So at any given time, individuals in cabinet can overrule the prime minister as a collective. And so what you yes. simply have is you have individuals in cabinet that does not possess testicular fortitude or ovarian audacity. Now, let's go back to after the cabinet makes a decision. There is a parliament for which the prime minister, there is no prime minister in, in parliament. There is the member for whatever constituency there is. This is why on the, on the agenda they have ministers. So when you act in the capacity of a minister, you get to have your communication. And when you get to the, to the agenda part of it, there is no prime minister. There is no uh, 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 leader of opposition. There's the member for Cat Island. There's the member for Kalani. And so they're all in there are equals at that particular moment where the vote makes the determination as to what happened. And so here's the problem that you have. If you have an emasculated uh, a House of Assembly, it causes and gives consent for cabinet to do what they want to do. And if you have an emasculated cabinet, the prime minister seemingly have ultimate powers. So please, Let's wow. stop the BS about Prime Minister Ingram, I mean, uh, 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 human Minutes. minutes have ultimate power. None of them ever did. What we've had is we've had we have sent men and women to the House of Assembly that does not represent what you, the people, want. They represent the party. Because we allow the party to choose who we want rather than us choosing it. And so essentially... You are voting for party, not people. And until you start voting people who represent people, you will always get what the party does. Uh, you you, you can't be more. You can't be more powerful than that. I mean, you can't be more honest than that. You can't tell me you sound on the behalf of, of the people of Kalani. You sound on the behalf of the people um, of 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 of, of, of Sanibel. You sound on the behalf of the people of, of Pine Gardens. You sound on the behalf of the people of Bantown. How the hell you can sound on my behalf if you don't represent me? You're not standing on my behalf. You saw Reese Chipman, Vaughn Miller, and Mac O'Pon. You saw these people stand on what their constituents believed not to raise the VAT. But there's all, always uh, uh, action 
a reaction for every action, but I'd like to weigh in on the, on the master chef. Go ahead. That's the Alan said. How could you put the country's, one of the country's best bright mind engineer in charge of health without a medical degree? So I not, question, let me, can I answer that? Can, can I answer that? Yeah. Let me answer that to you, Graham. Again, this is an error in thought. The Minister right. of Health is not supposed to run crap in this town. Okay? The Minister of Health job is to provide policy and directions for the implementation of that policy and convert it to law. We must get out of this asinine position we have that the minister is supposed to run He's a legislator. No, see, he's right, a legislator. So it doesn't matter. Right. It doesn't matter. In cabinet, he's a policy director. So he don't need so he to is. have a degree. But the point is that can he's he tell degree, me... He's a degree of common sense. The, right. Can he tell me that the policy comes as a collective out of cabinet? Can he tell me what's the policy position? See, we, exactly. keep, running, we keep looking for this... We keep looking for these five-year celebrities to run functioning structures. This is why every five years we get a reset to zero. We'll be lucky in the next administration if they can reset the dial to zero because we're currently at negative. And My so what God. I'm simply saying is we, we, we must stop perpetrating into the minds of the humans that ministers have some authority to run ministries. That's what the permanent secretary is for. And if permanent secretaries don't possess the testicular fortitude or varying audacity, then we need to pass laws to remove them. I, I don't care what general orders right. say. Because we, we have no more... See, the systems and the processes we used in the past have shown not to work. So why are we seeking to continue them? At minimum, there's rules and regulations on how the civil service is supposed to run. Let's follow the rules until we change it. And and so I've, seen, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen PSS jack up. I've seen PSS jack up ministries because they don't want personal agenda, because they want personal, emotional, emotive mindset. I've seen permanent secretary jack up. Um, the job of a permanent secretary is to carry out the technical aspect of what makes a ministry function, and they have other places around them. Who also calls for the functional of uh, the functionality of, of that ministry? The problem is, see, see how they call them five year celebrities. You call them five year celebrities. My thing is, right? Um, it just seems as if, and I don't know, because a, a celebrity is someone who's celebrated by many. That's what a celebrity is. It's a, I don't even know if these guys are celebrities. Mm -hmm. but let me I don't even know whether they're there. celebrities on the stage, see Alan, because no, you no, and no, I were stuck are. on the five year celebrities. Let no, let me give you another analogy. Okay, my favorite person to ever walked the earth used a bunch of analogies, and I try to try to use them to convey my messages. Also, the minister is the chairman of the board of the ministry for which he has. Okay, or let me use another one. Sorry, the prime minister is the chairman of the board. The minister is the CEO. And the PS is the president, and it answers up the chain. The president answers to the CEO who answers to the, chairman, to the chairman of the board. It is the president's job to run the company, the ministry, which is the PS. They do not interfere because you should have a competent president in that position. You know, you don't, why do you put somebody in the position if you have to do the work? And so all we have to do is follow the structure of good governance. The, the cabinet, as a collective of CEOs with a chairman of the board called First Among Equals Prime Minister, create the policies and the recommendation of legislation they intend to bring to parliament. That's all they do. They hand that policy and legislation to the PSs, who all serve or come to cabinet anyway, and their job is the execution of those policies in, 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 in a cohesive type environment for which they should have been developed. Because, for instance, you cannot have a social services that is not in harmony with education, that's not in harmony with health, health. that's not in harmony Sports. with uh, labor, 
You understand? So, so the point then is that we have never seen a written policy in the Bahamas probably in the last four decades. Things. Every time a minister says something, it becomes a policy. This is why you can have a policy today so, so, to fire people, and then tomorrow he says, not our, it's not our policy to fire. Guess what? He's not the I know young lady. I, I, I know young lady who, who is fired Nabucco. Who is fired Nabucco for just... I know young lady who is fired Nabucco for just saying that the, um, one of the ministers, uh, members of, uh, from Nabucco, uh, she was complaining about how hard it was in the container that they stay in or the airport that they um, that they stay in in Abaco, um, because she offended uh, a policymaker, a legislator, who at the end of the who at the end of the day took personal something that was actually going on from that perspective. Let's see if I can put Graham on another phone. So hold oh, one second, guys. And so we are we are we are people who go through a bunch of nonsense. Simply because, at the end of the day, um, these guys, these five years of deputies, they take everything personal. And she didn't believe you, um, she didn't believe you're right. We are paying a lot of people for nothing. I don't know what some of these guys are being paid for because they don't even know. Um, C. Allen Johnson, is there a crash course in, 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 in parliamentary democracy? Is there a crash course in how to become a cabinet minister or what it all it entails? Because that, you can't tell me... Um, all of the guys, David, David, and and and, and Maurice, Maurice Tynes and the rest of them, they say, um, every time when a new a parliament, parliamentarian comes in, a new parliamentary system comes in, these guys come in. They tell these guys what their jobs are, but because this, because the system was actually designed such in, in such a way, these guys have decided that. Decided that. Okay, this is Graham. Me just one second. Sorry about that, Graham. So these guys have decided. That, they, that, um, that they're going to just operate however they wish. Because ministers go into the building and they act as superstars and sometimes they, they, they don't give a fly in whatever, whatever, whatever they, um, the, the, the PSS. Um, the Nisha Rose, will, um, I'll tell you, she walk into she walk into the building, see Alan Johnson, on her first day as a cabinet minister in, in social services. When she walk into the first meeting, um, the people inside the um, room didn't stand up and she says, I'm going to walk back out and when they come back in, if you're not standing. So it's not a five-year celebrity, or, or, or is it just a J.A. Junior Chiba? No, that, 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 that's, that's suffering, suffering from an ego, an ego problem. And, and the point is this. In fact, the minister need not go to any ministry if they're doing their job correct. Time's job, as, or, or a person that holds his position, is about teaching them about the parliament. <clears throat> but there is a, 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 a manual of cabinet procedures for which they need to follow. But, but, but we can clearly look at other parliamentary democracies around the world and look at the very one that we are, we are modeled after and see how it's run. And ours do not run the way that is run. You know, and, and I just want us to, be, but we have a hybrid, but clearly for at least 40 plus years, we have not been following the rules of a parliamentary democracy. We've been doing uh, 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 MSU, and I use the word make stuff up, but there's another word for the S. And so we're just making stuff up as we go along that is becoming a habit. And so incompetence, ineptitude, and incapability has become a habit of governance in the Bahamas. And so what I'm simply saying is that we have to rethink governance as we know it. We have to rethink leadership as we know it. And so someone on the thing says, why don't individuals like myself and others go into the House of Assembly? And here's the problem with that. If you send 39 individuals to the House of Assembly and 19 of them possess the competence and understanding and you send 20 idiots, the way parliamentary democracy rules, the 20 idiots will still run and make the decision because majority rules. And so essentially, what you have to now choose to do is send more competence rather than party representative to the House of Assembly. Many of the people that you send to the House of Assembly, if they came to you without the party colors, you would not elect them. So then why is it if I put on a shirt, red, yellow, or even green, I now become 
a possibility of being elected when without the shirt, you wouldn't even consider me. And so this My is God. why you don't have competent people who present themselves. I want people to understand this for the parliament, which, can see, which, is, the, uh, the, which, which is the 16 in the Senate and the 39 in the House. And so if you just look even for all the appointments of, of, of offices, if the Bahamas in 400,000 people, billions of dollars in education, both locally and internationally, cannot find 100 people with the competence to run this country, then we are a failed state. We have failed in education. Listen, let me, let me, let me, let me read, let me read a couple of these. We tech. fail in everything. Let me read a couple of these texts right quick. Um, she thinks Mr. says, our country is a business and they still can't operate a business. Uh, um, see, I'm, 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 I'm Graham Yeah. Um, she, she says, our country is a business and they still can't operate a business. Um, should we expect person who've never had a business in their lives to be able to understand business principles? Well, Again? I mean, if, hold on, hold on, see, Alan. Go ahead, Graham. If you come to me, right? and you show me all your business degrees from Harvard, Yale, and any other college, right? And then C. Allen comes to me and shows me that he's run three successful businesses already. Which one of you would I want to consult with? Because C. Allen's not going to let me hire him because obviously he's an entrepreneur. So which one of you should I consult with? C. Allen's the better to run the business. He's not the one that's talking about it. He's the one that's done it. So and let me give you an example. I lowered my electricity bill by 90% by making myself efficient before going solar for the last 15 years. So an American comes and says they can lower your light bill 30%. Well, do you want to go by the guy who says what he can do? Or do you want to go by the Bahamian who's actually done it? Well, you're going to go with the foreigner, of course, because you can send $3 million and you can get a system that cost X, Y, Z, mm -hmm. and now there's $3 million offshore. See, there's a lot of variables here we're not looking at. But if it was proper business, you'd go with the person who uh, who actually has run the business. Who's run some business in the past. Yes. Go ahead, see how I differ a little on that. I'm like I'm like Bill Gates and Michael Dell and and and, and uh, uh, Ellen Mo uh, Mo Musk and the rest of them. They look for competence, cumulative competence, emotional competence, more than just IQ and other things. Because just yeah. because someone has a degree, don't make them competent in one particular thing. Dr. Minish yes. ran an office building, he ran a medical building, and he ran a practice. But his competence in leadership is where the deficit is. Uh, Diagla ran a wonderful wash house, okay? And so we assume that that translates to competence in Ministry of Tourism. It does not, because every particular position requires a different level of competence. And so the problem is this it is what we have. We confuse... We confuse qualifications with competence. And so essentially, and, and again, we keep going back about running things. And so I, my argument is we must abandon this concept that ministers are to run things. The collective intelligence coming out of cabinet with consultation, not just with cabinet, with, with other people that may be out of cabinet, consultants and the likes. And so... And so, and, 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 and using this thing with qualification, then surrenders power to somebody with some certificates who have been taught to think in a box, in a, in a category, category. This is why you see so many people say, my success came when I dropped out of college. And so we need to stop confusing a degree that you could practically buy with the competence to, write, to run something. And so again, I'm simply saying to you, there is, if you believe that Donald Trump runs America exclusively by himself or even his cabinet, then you would have touched. That's where you have what is called collective intelligence of an organization. If you believe that the CEO, the chairman of the board, and the president of Microsoft runs it, just the three of them, then you would have touched on how businesses run. Business does not run. By, in, by the individual intelligence of an individual. It is directed in being able to see a vision of what you want to achieve. 
and being able to tap into that collective intelligence to have individuals come together to achieve that goal. That's why it says a leader has a vision of the future. The word vision is the ability to see the future in the present. So what that leader does is he sees where he wants to be, he knows where he are, and then he finds a team of individuals that plots the best path and the, the most accelerated means to get to that position in the future. It is in one of, and so this is why I'm saying we have to stop electing God kings, okay? They instantly, we believe that once they elected, they were selected. Once they appointed, they are anointed. Religion, politics, rumors, superstition, and stupidity is got is gotten the Bahamas where it is today. Politics, religion, superstition, rumors, and stupidity got us where we are today. Let's listen. You, you got to be careful with that because that. Uh, every every party that's being created now is a kingdom body. You got a kingdom body. You got a Christian body. You got a constitution body. You got a mom. Um, um, so if if, if, they, if those are the things that got us where we are today, the people are walking all around town and saying that the only way we can have a good body is if Christians go to Parliament. Um, last time I may check, Miriam Emanuel was a pastor. Warren you, Miller you saw, was a pastor. You see this apple? Uh, Did you see this apple? Uh, you see this apple I'm holding up? Uh, is that, yeah, that's a beautiful apple, blue apple. Yeah, you see it? You, you, right? Yeah, I see the blue because apple. Because I call something something, it don't make it, this don't, just because I call it an apple, don't make it an apple. That's my point. See, we, see, we start attaching names. <laughs> see, that's the problem. Because you, you call yourself something, it don't make you who you are. Even the Bible tells you to test the spirit. Listen. The leadership are, of those are, parties. No, uh, I am no I'm no leader of any party at this particular time, right? But I uh, will say to you, I will accept a challenge of the leadership of every known political party in this country, whether it be the BNCP, the Christian gov the Christian uh, government movement. The, uh, the, 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 the Constitution Party, the DNA, the FNM, or PLP, anyone in their hierarchy who has the ability to make a decision on behalf of the party to have a discussion to prove their competence of where we are and where we need to be. And that's what we have to do. We must begin to test. Okay? So, hold on, see, Alan. Hold on, see, Alan. What do you say, Grant? While Sian is correct, and I agree with him 100%. And I'd love to see any of them challenge C. Allen, because I've not found him to be wrong as long as I've known him. And he's been consistent. Like see, I see my, my thing is this, right? I, 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 you, I, you, I, you, Graham, right? But I can uh, tell you one thing, Adrian. Uh, not one of them other movements besides the yellow and the red. And I'm now, as the days tick by, suspecting the red could be included in my statement. Not one of them could get their deposit back. <laughs> So you figure only PLPs will get the deposit back. That's what you said? I, I scared of F and M. I believe some of them will lose their deposit, if not all, because I'm not seeing the plan. And the plan must include, as C. Allen has always said, data. Without data, you don't have nothing. And without energy, you, you can't even get the data because your smartphone and your computer require energy to accumulate the data. We're finished. So, so C. Allen, C. Allen hey, joins us. Let me say this. I'm saying to you. Do you believe that me as an... See, if C. Allen Johnson can outnumber the intelligence, the collective intelligence of any political party, they, that, that I can stand up and say, your party has been outnumbered by one, me, then your party lacks something because the collective intelligence should be in a position that C. Allen Johnson should be afraid to challenge your party on its belief and its solution system. And I'm saying today, I'm not the most intelligent person I don't have what, what, what most would perceive, but I say to them, political party today believes that we as a country should vote for them. I am saying, as an Alliance for Change representative, they should send the be their best to defend the future that they intend to drive us to. And unless people begin to demand, and I invite you and all you other people to demand that the PLP, the FNM, the DNA, the BNCP, the Kingdom Government Movement, the Constitutional Party, the new BD, Reform BTM, BDM, and anyone else should take the Allen Johnson up on a discussion of the direction we need to go. And maybe they can even enlighten 
and inspire him to endorse them. That's all. Clearly. So you're not endorsing, you're not endorsing Cassius Stewart? Stewart? So who are you tell me? You're not endorsing Cassius Stewart? I haven't seen a vision in any political party yet. I've had some individuals I've talked to that have impressed me of understanding what governance requires. But I have not seen the vision or agenda from any political party yet that has inspired me to say, I'm ready to go. Adrian, we are uh -huh. in critical times yeah, right now. The checklist for those other parties and the checklist for the yellow and red party as well. How will you lower my VAT to 5% or get rid of it? How will you remove all tax on food? First of all, how will you lower my energy costs to below 10 cents a kilowatt hour so I can compete globally? I could go on, but you ask those couple questions to any movement, including yellow and red, and I suspect they won't answer you. Oh, and one more icing in on the cake, as you would say. When will you tax 5% VAT on the $3 trillion Brent Simonet's ministry said happens in this country? You ask them those questions. And they will run off to the kingdom. So, 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 uh, let's, let's be frank about where we are with the, um, okay, we know and understand that Dr. Minister, and, and we have to get to this very quickly, I'm um, C. Allen, um, you started to talk about this last night, the competent leader, um, where he sits in terms of convention, whether or not he is going to be removed, whether they want to remove him. We talked a bit about this last night. Um, the bottom line is, um, uh, most of the people who are in the uh, in the FNM have already decided that the competent leader cannot win the next election. They've decided that the person who now leads the FNM, they've decided that they can't, but for the most part, they're afraid because uh, in, in, in these kind of cases, Brave Davis owns the BLP. Kumalafi owns the FNM. It's very difficult to be Kumalafi head of an election at this stage. It's very, it's impossible to be Brave Davis. It's more likely that Kumalafi could be beaten than Brave Davis or Hubert Menace. How do you go about, you talked about the, the internal running of the FNM right now. I know from sources that there's a group of foot who wants to move the competent leader right now. I know that. The question is though, how can they go about moving for those who didn't hear it last evening? Please like and share everybody. Okay, before, before I, let me just say this, right? I want people, the behemoths, to understand. If a leader does not allow for democracy in the organization they lead, how is it that you then expect for them to give you democracy in governance once they become leader of the country? Power does not corrupt. And I want people to stop saying this. I want you to listen to this very carefully. Power does not corrupt, nor does absolute power corrupt absolutely. Power reveals. Power reveals the person they pretended not to be when they were in a weakened position. And so, but you can have hints. When a person tells you who they are, believe them. And you begin to see them as you see what they do in their political organization. I will not be challenged or you will be hurt, damaged, omitted, shut out, or whatever. And if you, when you see them do that, when people in their organization do not have the ability to speak and to bring opposing ideas inside or outside the organization where they will be punished, they will be excluded, then you begin to recognize that organization leader is not good for you regardless of the philosophy of that organization because it's the leader that drives the philosophy of the organization. And so when you see that Kamalafi and Brave Davis and uh, Minis does not allow for equitable challenge, that they don't allow their leadership and their vision to be challenged within the organization, don't expect it to change when you give them the title of prime minister. They will choose, just like in their organization, emasculated men and women who would support 
their, their authoritarian rule, that's who they will give you in your constituency to meet them in parliament so they won't be challenged in cabinet. When they tell you who they are by virtue of their action, like you say, don't judge a man by what he say. Judge him by what he do or what he does. And so you look at these organizations, and when you see their positions is stacked to protect leadership, it means that the leadership does not have the competence of the organization. What he has is control. He has another C. He don't have the confidence or the competence. He has what is called control. And he will continue to exercise that control in the House of Assembly, in the Senate, in the, in the government agencies, and in cabinet, and you will not get the governance that you deserve. Okay? You'll get the governance that you vote for. And so what you have is a, a minister already has created an environment that he has control of cabinet and he has control of parliament and the Senate. What Minis is doing is losing control of the party, which happens to be the delegates, which happen to come from the branches. And so essentially, he's losing his ability due to the economics and the level of incompetence displayed, not just by him, because ultimately any incompetence in a minister lies in minutes. When Jeffrey Lloyd fails, it's because Minnis allows it. When Dion Fox fails, it's because Minnis allows it. When Carl Becker fails and fails and fails, it's because Minnis allows it. There can be no failure in cabinet without consent of the prime minister because he has the ability to appoint and disappoint. And so let's get to understand that the ultimate responsibility lies with minutes. And the mere fact that 50 plus 1, that's all it requires to keep minutes in check. 50 plus 1. If he has 70 people in cabinet, he needs 9 people to decide that the decision he's making is wrong. You have 39 individuals in the House of Assembly. What you need is 20 to decide. Or 19, technically. No, you need 20. Because the need 20. vote, which is 38, so you need 20. Yes, so you need 20. 20 individuals to decide that the direction the country is going is wrong. And the mere fact that you can't find 20 individuals today in the House of Assembly who cannot see that we are off track tells you, you, us, as behemoths, would be sent. We sent men and women to the House of Assembly with titles. That, collect, that does not possess the testicular fortitude or the ovarian audacity to do what is right in the eyes of the demon people, in the eyes of God, and in their conscience. So why, 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 them would somebody yeah. join the, 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 why them would someone join the, um, you, you, are, you are Shannon Dorcard, right? You are Aram Lewis. You are Chanel Ferguson. You are young men with great future, Great prospect, whatever whatever the, the, the competencies are or lack thereof. The bottom line is, you now have the potential, um, um, Graham Bell put, to save your political wherewithal. You could save your Adam Tansom and Solomon by taking a stand right now. You could tell that the children are not eating inside the house. You could tell the electricity is off. You could tell that the company authority has made enough, mis um, enough mistakes to wreck a nation. He's made enough. Why in the world are these people standing up, Graham, Graham Bell put? Why can't you hear from these people? Let me explain Let me... what's going on. Um, what those new, young, vibrant leaders don't understand is that at least 10 of them are old school and they got them oppressed or they got them on good behavior or best manners or whatever. What they don't understand is if the majority, and you already got four in opposition, if the majority of them people up in the House were to send a letter to the Governor General, Travis Robertson could be Prime Minister tomorrow. If they no, have confidence don't, in don't, him. No, grab, 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 don't do that, don't do that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, see, Alan. I know, I know you, I'm all on, I know you're going to be brought to Alan, but give I him know. a chance. See, Alan's going to correct me, and I, I need correcting, but I got to say this. If they had the balls to stand up, 
and just say, listen, we sent a letter to Governor General because we really don't like our constituents. They can't eat. They ain't got no job. And you list the, they don't have the, the skills to move into a conceptual or digital economy, blah, blah, blah. And this is what we need for our people and our constituency. Branville McCartney did it, paid the price. Vaughn Miller did it. Freeport did it. Uh, Bain Down did it, Reese. And you saw the price they paid. So if I'm eating chicken, right, because mm-hmm. I ain't eating steak, that's reserved for the rich politician. But I'm the backbencher. I'm eating my piece of uh, KFC. You think I'm going to say raise my head so I have to go outside and be at the water pump drinking water and eating corned beef? No, bro. I play in it safe. But they're so foolish because if they did the right thing, they would be in charge eating the steak. Isn't that sad? My God. My God. Good yeah, listen, I just want... I just want people, see, I, I, I want to be, always be factually correct when I speak. And I don't want to, you know, allow, uh, just let people have the wrong information. Our Constitution says, should a vote of no confidence happen in the Prime Minister, he has three choices. This isn't what you think. This isn't what you believe. This is what the Constitution says. A vote of no confidence will not make anybody Prime Minister unless the Prime Minister willfully accepts the vote of no confidence. Now, here's what happens. This is the three choices of the Constitution. You don't randomly make nobody. On the vote of no confidence, the Prime Minister has the ability to do one of three things. Resign within seven days. Do nothing and take the chance of being removed or reappointed. And the third option is to give a writ of an election. Those are the three choices. We don't, there's no fantasy about what happens in a vote of no confidence in the prime minister. He accepts and get, tenders his resignation. He does nothing and wait to be removed or be reappointed, or sign a writ of an election, setting a date for an election. So there's no other choice when using that. The other means for which the party, because the Constitution gives the leader of the party with the most seats the position of prime minister. So Dr. Minnis is protected by virtue of being the leader of the free national movement. The only way to remove the prime minister without an election is to change the leadership of the party. And so if the, if the free national movement was to change its leader, then that leader becomes prime minister. That's why they are not trying to remove ministers in the House because he can go to an election. They've been trying to yes, use yes. the mechanism of the party to, the to party, have him removed. The party. So they don't have to go to the election. And so this is, what the, and that, that's what the Constitution says. So believe it or not, when you hear the the the, the quite cute the, the, the quite cutes as the dame calls them, because they surely not QCs, who would sit and go and give you a constitutional ref, a recommendation for a constitutional referendum on how to get power to the people, and they don't tell you the modified seventy three and seventy four of the Constitution, they are liars, because. What keeps, if we, if 73 the Constitution was not there, we would probably have a new Prime Minister every month because he would not have the protection of by being the leader of the party. Then you would have, with the rest of the parliamentary democracies around the world have, it's the leader in the House of Assembly that commands the respect of the majority of the members that sits there. That's not how it happens in the Bahamas. It makes the leader of the party the prime minister. And so if we want to have a constitutional referendum, remove 73. So it simply says, the person who commands the respect of the highest number of individuals in the House of Assembly will be prime minister. And you will have individuals work on gaining the respect of the others. Because believe it or not, under that system, you can have the opposition be prime minister, you know. Yes. Because if he commands the most respect, in spite of not having the most seats, yes. he would be prime minister, and you will begin to see a cabinet made up of opposition, independence, and, 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 and of government. 
Yes. See? So what I'm simply saying is the system isn't broken. It was never meant to give you power. It was never meant to give you control. And you have individuals with titles, again, with degrees and qualifications who have been lying to you for 48 years about where your power lies. It is... So, I mean, that, 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 so what I'm simply that, saying is that... Let's go, let's go with some political conjecture for a moment because um, based on some calls that I've gotten and people who I've spoken to inside inside the free national movement, uh, let's just say for 10 seconds, um, Graham, and you can uh, see Alan, I, I, I think he buys into a completely different theory based on all that I always bounce off him. But the reality is, Brent Simonet comes out and he says in the newspaper, no more excuses. He throws a blow across the across the floor, and he says, "No more excuses." Dwayne Sands goes to Parliament he, um, to make his statement about Abaco. Pay more bodies, and the information is given to the police. Dwayne Sands goes. He sits ne he sits next to Brent Summerlin inside the House of Assembly that day. On the day that he makes his statement about how many real bodies it was, and the list that was handed over to the police gets up in the House of Assembly, points across the table at his former co um, cabinet colleagues, at his former colleague, period. And he says to them, many of you over there will wish you did, but both of us did. Talk about him and doing. Many of you all won't be on this side. And after he would have made that statement, Dwayne Sands comes out on national radio and he goes on a Quick campaign for self-redemption. Could it be a marriage between Brent and Dwayne with a new narrative? The narrative being, we have to save not only the country, but we have to save the FNM from Dr. Minnis so that the PLP can't get this thing back no more. Could it be that Brent Simonet, the Bahamas, the United Brent Party, not the United Bahamian, but not the UBP in the context of the old party, but the United Brent Party has been recruiting other persons. And sources say he prepared to pay their salary just to remove minutes. Does that seem almost palatable? See, Alan or Graham, Graham, they salvage you. Remember with Loretta, there was a movement? Yes. To move minutes? Yes. Whose side was uh, Mr. Sands on? Loretta. Oh. Well, do you think that thought process went away? No. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if my friend was about to run again next election, but anyway. Um, the question I would have is, where do you get the man who has everything? Basically prime, nothing. Prime ministership. Yes. So he can put his picture up of his daddy. Wait, wait, wait. He has more, more things? Yeah, more things, of course. Ma would you give the man who has everything? Give him more. You also want your, you want your position, your title. So Then he doesn't have I everything. Think, uh, he, would, he would like to be prime minister. And what better way to do it than to force a snap election, like C. Allen said? Election you right. You'll have an election, and if you know it's uh, something coming, for lack of a better word, a coup, you, you'll have an election. So you have an election. Who wins? People haven't forgotten Mr. Kirsty, but they don't like where they're at. So they may choose to stick here if it had a new leader, which is what they're saying about the other party too. And so you say, people, hold on, hold on. Let, let's make it clear what you say. People are prepared to go with the PLP as long as it's not brave. But that's what I hear, and I'm pulling for Brave, by the way. Pulling him to do what? Hmm? What are you pulling for Brave for? I don't know. Why not? I always um, C. Allen, you, have you heard that, C. Allen? <laughs> <laughs> I've, heard, I've heard that, right? But I even heard the quantity that requires him to lose an election. See, well, I don't go on generalities. You know how people say all Bahamians and all whatever? It doesn't work yeah. like that. Now, 
I've heard that in circles among PLPs, F and M's, independents, and undetermined. Okay, uh -huh. but I don't know if the quantity exists that would put him in a position not to be elected. Now I can tell you what is the challenge to the PLP or to the leadership. They have not expressed a vision for which the 70% of the population has bought into yet. Because people right. now, and as we begin to suffer the brunt of the economic hardship, is going to be looked for more than personality to get us out of this problem that we are in. So I see a, sh a political shift happening. But going back to what Graham said, there will be, if the free national movement, the individuals in the free national movement, had any confidence that they would win an election, they would have a vote of no confidence in minutes and go back to the people. They have some doubts about whether or not they could win an election. Because again, can if they were to call a snap election without removing minutes, you'll just be re-electing minutes. Because the constitution uh, hold, hold, hold on one second, see Alan. Hold on one second, because somebody says to me, um Glenn Roy Pratt says then it destroys the narrative that minutes uh, that minutes is Brent Puppet, does it not? No, it doesn't. Um, minutes was Brent Puppet. Brent just don't need the puppet no more. Brent just don't need the puppet no more. And um, if Brent, Brent has already gotten most of what he wanted in the first two and a half years, what the hell do you need minutes for now? Minutes cannot go to the oligarch for money um, to win the next election. The only, only three places you can go to for money outside of going back to Texas. Minutes cannot go to the other guy for money. He can't go to the White Knight for money no more. Because Brent is already against it. Minutes cannot go unless he goes to the boss for money. Minutes cannot go to the White Knight for money. He cannot even go to the machinery for money. Ain't no money in the machinery. So where does he get the money from? See how it this election is not going to be about money. This election is going to be about ideas. This election is going to be about hope. This election is going to be about vision. I'm going to make sure that we bring this front in focus, definitely, because this is no more an election for me, one of personalities and political parties, regardless yes. of the philosophy that I or others may support. This one is for country. And so essentially, and this is why I'm challenging the leadership of those political organizations, that they should send their best, whether individually or collectively, to engage individuals like me who live into the future, live in the future. I don't, I don't speak about the future. I live into the future. I speak from the future. Yes, sir. Yes, and I'm sir. Simply yes, sir. Saying, and I'm simply saying is that we have to begin to have a conversation about not just what's now, but what's next. But going back to the machinery of the F and M, if if the reason why Brent Simonet nor does Dwayne Sands want a snap election, is that con constitutionally. Minutes, should the FNM win again, will still be prime minister. The only way for Minutes not to be prime minister is to remove him as leader of the party. So before any election is called, they must have two things. There's two scenarios. One, you, must, you have a scenario of removing Minutes first and then going to an election or just continuously running as, running as, a, running as a country. They could remove Minutes yeah, and make Brent one, Prime Minister. Quick, quick, uh, oh, oh, sure. One second, see Yeah. Go ahead, Grant. Quick point of order. This November, they should have a convention. But they may say they don't have the money. Or COVID, we can't sit six feet within each other. Yes. Now, what if you see that rich, Bahamian gentleman, politician, throw down the gauntlet and say he'll sponsor the convention? Because that's, that's where the Loretta Butler, that's where the Loretta Butler, yes, the fans have to step back in. Now we got a conundrum, don't we? No, we don't have a conundrum because Loretta Butler is not an offer, not an offer, is not an option for prime minister at this particular time. She must be elected. No, I'm, I'm saying I don't want to go on scenarios that ain't possible. I'm talking about whoever will become prime minister, short of an election has to be sitting in the House of Assembly today. Yes. Today. Dwayne. Not in the future. Okay. But you understand okay. what Graham is saying? No. That... No. See, but Graham is talking about some Again, people yeah. believe about Loretta Butler. I'm saying No, no. I, I, I agree with you. I, 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 I agree with you, see, Alan. Dwayne, Dwayne currently sits in there. So let's use Dwayne. I only said Loretta. Yes, yes, yes. No. Let's do it. I'm exactly. saying you. Hold on. Hold on. See, Alan. Go ahead, Graham. Oh, 
names. Dwayne Sands could have the sponsorship, and they could say, we have a convention, and since I guided us so carefully through the corona, and we didn't have an outbreak under my watch, and then we went and opened up the borders, I wasn't for this. He could talk his way straight into PM. He has to talk his way through the delegates. Please, understand this. Yeah, the delegates. humans don't but, um, but, if the, if, but if the delegates are the place now, see how they well, they're looking straight into the eyes of menace. And they can see the level of incompetence that all of us are seeing. They can see the level of failures. Do you believe the delegates at this stage in the FNM, the rock with Doku, who seems to have already switched, um, with Brent Sumner being able to add the money? Can you not see a scenario where um, menace is gone? You could, but I want to see the point you guys keep missing is without an election, any person in the FNM sitting in the House of Assembly can become prime minister. It doesn't yes. have to be Dwayne Sand. It can be Brent Simmons himself. We agree. Whoever lead, no, see, I'm saying to you, whoever leads the, the, the party at this particular time without, without uh, calling an election becomes prime minister on the day they become leader of that party. And so what I'm simply saying is that we don't need to convolute and conflate the concept of an election as to a convention or election within the FNM. The delegates need not come to know six feet anything. We're in the age of technology. We're seeing the reality right now that the FNM literally don't need no millions of dollars like they say. If they have 250 delegates, they need 250 cell phones, they need a, 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 a digital platform so all of them can log in. They can poll them individually and vote anonymously. All of this is possible right now. I will run the FNM convention for 50 grand if they're ready to have it. 50 grand. I'll, I'll perform the whole thing. We'll have a full convention. If the PLP wants to have a convention, I will conduct it for 50 grand. And every single and that's delegate. A good, that's a pretty good profit margin you could be making but, there, CL. No, but they won't be spending the millions. That's a, that's, um, that's a gift I'm giving them. Yeah. That's 50 grand. He said, he said, he said, he's saving them money. Yeah. Right. So I'm simply saying is this: this whole concept that they keep they keep selling you that you must have some convention where people fly in and all these different things. If you yeah. want to vote, go get the device. Here's your digital ID system that we can authenticate and verify who you are. This is how you vote. It keeps it anonymous. You have an anonymizer because once you put in your ID and your passcode. The computer then no longer looks to see how you vote. It accepts your vote, but it cannot tell how you vote. So I'm simply saying is that this can be done today. So if the PLP, the FNM, the DNA, whoever, want to use the excuse that we have to meet somewhere in, a, in one location, is un, they will be unfit to run the country going forward because the world has changed. To, just to go before the next five minutes, somebody said, because I'm just to go with the end of um, the word on the street is that Chester Cooper works for the oligarchs. And so they believe that he's one and the same of all that presently exists. That's the word on the street. Um, if he worked for the oligarch already, with BAF Financial and all the other stuff that are being, that, that's being said out there, if that is the case, is he one and the same? And so if you're replacing um, Peter with Paul and, and, and Piper with Pedro, um, is there a difference? Because um, are we going to have any major change with the same old mindset like you always say, see it, because all the people I talked to, they said that the PLP had left office 30 years ago. They wouldn't be feeling this thing that they feel right now. But it's, it's as if they feel as if they're still talking about the PLP while they're talking about the FNM because the bitter sweet has not come out of their mouth. Let me, let me, say, that, let me say this, right? It, it always hurts me when we begin to limit our choices for leaders to the level of incompetence and capability and ineptitude that is displayed in the House of Assembly today. It My is God. almost as though we have been conditioned like rats to believe that the leaders must come from those who sit there right now. And My again, God. I say to you, if we don't have 100 individuals that does not sit in governance today, who has the capability of running this country, then we are a failed state. So when we begin to say, well, let's look at the, at the four PLPs as the only people who could lead the PLP and become the next prime minister. That party has failed. Okay? My God. 
when we begin to look at the FNM and say that the, third, that the, the 35 of them is the only individuals capable of running the FNM, that party has failed. See, parliament is supposed to be an association of equals. Okay? The prime minister is the first among is the chief, equals. The chief among equals. So this whole concept that this one is better than the next is the garbage they have taught you through conditioning. What we have is failed, incompetent, inept, uh, 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 whatever else eyes there is, that we keep sending to parliament because they hide behind the, the veil of political parties. How hard it is if we have three, let's put five major parties, right? How hard it is for us to interview as a nation 200 people when we can interview them individually as a constituency. In my constituency, if my constituency get together and there's five individuals from the DA, the PLP, the FNM, the BNCP, the Kingdom Government Movement, or even six, how hard is it for us as a community to interview those six without the clouding of color to see who is best and most competent to be sent to the House of Assembly. Forget what the, what the, what the scream of PLP, FNM, DNA, and all this other stuff. My community, my constituency, can you guys look at Centerville and ignore the PLP colors, ignore the DNA, ignore the, D, the, 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 the FNM, PLP, DNA, BNCP, Kingdom Government Movement, BDM, ignore the colors, and look just the constituency of Centerville and ask yourself, who will be the most competent and best person amongst these people without the colors to represent us? Then we will get My the leadership God. that we deserve. And if we do that My in God, every that's good. That's single good. constituency, we will get the best collectors, collection of those that offer themselves. Where we choose the most competent amongst them. Come on, Siali. Come on, buddy. That offers Come themselves on. in that constituency. Yes. Let's not in 2022 or sooner be blinded by the game of partisan politics. It's called identity politics. It says you have no identity. You have no choice unless you choose to vote with us. You are a nobody. Do not surrender your ability to think. So to decide what is best for you and your family. Please. If you vote someone, party, someone, someone says, someone says, party. someone says the DNA is a viable option, and and someone says the DNA is a viable option. The question is, what makes him so? Someone says the Kingdom government is a viable option. What makes him so? Someone says Adrian France is a is is a is an excellent independent. What makes me so? Someone says that C. Allen Johnson is a is a viable option. What makes him so? What um um C. Allen, I I I have this new scenario that I use constantly, and I I'm sorry to use his brother's name, but. Ed Fields was in Atlanta forever. He had a beautiful backdrop. Who is Ed Fields without that backdrop? Is he still a valuable person in the eyes of people? Or is he valuable because he stands in the front of a beautiful backdrop? Do you need the backdrop to make you who you are and to qualify you to go to parliament? Do you need the backdrop of the PLP? Do you need the backdrop of the FNM? Do you need the backdrop of the DNA? If you are so worthy, if you work so hard in the constituency, if you work so hard, living qualified uh, with competencies, skill factors, if you have these things and you offer these things, do you need the colors to make you an electoral official? Do you, use, do you, do you need these backdrops to make you who you are? When are you going to bet on yourself? When are you going to bet on the fact that you have the requisite skills to be a, a valuable player in our country? Why are we so deceived? That if you're not a PLP, why am I an enemy? If I ask this question today, why am I an enemy? If I if we do this show today, by the end by the FNM of the PLP, what makes me an enemy? Because I'm not saying that Brad Davis or or, or Hubert Menace or Chester Cooper or Brent Simonet or anybody else, based on what they've shown in history, don't show the lack of competencies, 
to lead our country what makes me an enemy. The fact that we are having an open discussion, what makes Sea Island an enemy? Because he does not agree that the way our country is headed is not the right direction. What makes me an enemy? Because somebody decide that sovereignty is more important than your salary. What makes Graham an enemy? If he believes that solar energy and energy efficiency is the way to go, why would you keep doing the same old, same old and complain five years more on radio, five years more on social services, social media? Why would you keep doing this? Why would you do it to yourself? And then why would you come on these shows and act as if it's going to get better because I'm a tribe member of the PLB, because I'm a tribe member of the FNM, because I rock with Doc, or because I say PLP all the way. What makes me any kind of competent human being? That's garbage. See, let me just say this, right? Here's how you define the leadership for your country. Anybody comes to me right now, I have no problem in telling them my personal vision for my life. I have no problem in telling them and defending my vision for my community. Now, when I move to leadership of the party, I should be able to go beyond a compilation of ideas and define the vision, the strategy, and the plans for achieving what it is I say I see for my country. And I'm simply saying this, if we begin to choose individuals that at minimum have a vision for their community that integrates into a vision for the country, we'll be better off. And for those who say that the DNA has a vision, I say to them, I challenge the leadership of the DNA to defend their vision. For those who say that the leadership of the PLP has a vision, I challenge them to defend it. I challenge the, P the FNM today to defend the vision they have for the country going forward. Don't tell me that you have a compilation of ideas that I can show you in the most minimal effort is disjointed at best. You can't have an idea for education that does not integrate into labor, that does not integrate into the future development of the country. See, all of these things are interconnected. And so you don't bring me a book of ideas that you have happened to be harvested from around the internet and other places. That again is a list of ingredients. I want to know, can you cook? Do you have a recipe? to go along with the ingredients you're presenting to me. And so I'm simply saying is, do you, as the leader of the party, will be the mm -hmm. chef, the supervise, the cooks, who will be cooking each of those singular aspects of that meal? So please, don't tell me about the DNA has a vision, because I say to them today, they have none. And I challenge them to prove me wrong. I say to you, the PLP today has no vision for the country like they did in 1973. And I challenge them to prove me wrong. I say to you today that the FNM true action is showing us they have no, no, no vision or direction for this country. I say the same thing to the Constitution Party, to the BNCP, to the Kingdom Government Movement, and to the BDM. If you, as leader of your party or your organization as a collective, can't challenge one person that represents the collective intelligence of the Alliance for Change, then you don't deserve to be lead us. We My need God. no more talkers. We need some doers. I am one person. I represent the collective intelligence of a group of individuals that want to see better for the Bahamas. Yes, yes, I'm yes. I'm coming to represent... I'm coming to collect to represent their ideas, and you're telling me that your ideas can't test against ours? My See, God. that's the problem. See, identity politics allows you to run and hide behind a color because you yourself feel that unless you belong to some gang, you have no power. You have been conditioned to believe and accept that. Sian has said that for, Sian has said that for years. It's a gang mentality, because if you pull any one of them out on their own and put them on stage with C. Allen, it ain't going to come out well. That's right. And that's the bottom line. And you can pick, and you have someone like you, you know, Adrian, I'd like to see you next election be the moderator. And like in Elizabeth Estates, when Dwayne Sands lost, 
to my cousin Ryan Pinder because he didn't come in the public debate, and we know they're very powerful. I'd like for you to set the debate on social media with C. Allen because he's very good at producing and studio, et cetera, yes. where you have anyone that is running for any constituency. So if it's St. Anne's, invite Brent. Invite me, independent. Invite the PLP, the DNA, the kingdom government. Invite everybody on stage. And you ask them the questions and allow the people in the audience and on social media to ask the questions on a smartphone number and grill them. They would all fail. I will, I will definitely do that. I'm going to have the team. Um, we, we are setting up a, a host of virtual town hall meetings right now and also practical town hall meetings, see Alan Johnson. We are doing that with um, Operation Sovereign Bahamas. Um, communication teams are doing it right now. And I hope they're listening but so you're, that you're, um, they, would be, able, they would be able to actually put everything together. Adrian, don't no, wait, don't wait the no, no, Adrian, 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 you have. Adrian, Adrian, you have okay, don't wait till election. Do it no, now. no, no, I, I, I'm saying now. I said we're doing it now. Yeah. No, Adrian, I can, can I say for something? For yeah. each one of the see, constituencies. I, I can't no, go wait for whoever. I'm sorry. No, I, I'm saying this. The country can't wait for whoever they decide to name to run for some constituency. Today, we know who the leaders of these parties are. Yes. Tell the leaders to come. They, they're yes. supposed to have the vision. I'm saying to you, go to Mr. Brave Davis, Chester and Mr. Fred Mitchell. Go to uh, uh, Hubert Alexander Minnis, uh, K. Peter Tanquest and Carl Kalmer. Go to Kamalafi and Bushme and Brister and uh, uh, Omar Bradley. Go to uh, 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 Wesley Campbell and uh, Johnson, Ch Johnson, who's the chairman. I want you to go to, uh, 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 to, to, to Ms. Ali McIntosh. I want you to go to Cassius Stewart. I want you to go to these leaders of these political parties and set them up to meet the one person, one, just me. If they could get past me, they will get my endorsement and I will work with them to sell their vision. Just, you don't have to wait for the whole group of them. The leader, I represent, I, also invite the independent candidate that the people of no, those constituencies oh, no, make no, no, see, again, Graf, 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 I don't want... He doesn't need to leadership of parties for it. Graf, see, I don't know who independence is in a fantasy. I'm saying to you the Constitution as it stands today gives the authority to a leader of a political party. If that individual who now claims to lead a political party will become prime minister, I want that leader or his designate, number one, number two, or three of that party, which will become government based on the Constitution, to defend their vision, to defend the direction this country wants to go. And I am willing to accept that. See, I know the media is afraid of me because I've seen their behavior, control opposition and manufactured consent. And I challenge, if you're not afraid of me, then you all you talk show hosts, Bring them on. I see where they go, the chairman and deputy chairman and vice chairman go and talk crap between each other on their show. Bring someone like me on. Let's have a conversation about tomorrow. Because talking about the incompetence and the failure of what somebody else did, it's not your level of success. Success is how well you are capable of doing based on what you are capable of, not how bad somebody else does. You jumping six feet across a 10-foot ditch because the other guy drunk five, you both fail. The behemoth people <laughs> can no longer accept failure. We are looking now as to what's now and what next. I've been talking about today for over a decade. I know what today brings. Yes, I know sir. Yes, sir. the meaning of digital transformation. I know the meaning of innovation. I know the meaning of digitization. I know the meaning of digital, digitaliz digi digitalization. I also know the difference between the word resilient, resilience, and resiliency in the context of national development. And I'm simply saying, we have no more time for talk. There are much more people more competent than me. I am simply the one who is willing to put themselves out today. Because if you can beat me, there will be others greater than me to come. But I am the Lord. My God, that's good. That you have to overcome. I am the Lord. My God. Okay? And I'm simply saying, 
if you cannot overcome the lowest bar of intelligence for the future, see Alan Johnson, then you're not ready for governance of the Bahamas going forward. Which Ooh, now? Lord, that's good. Yes. Man, that is good. Let me tell you something. You know, anything what you would say, see Alan Johnson, but don't impress me. But let me tell you, when you, when you said just now, right, it actually sells chill, sell chill bumps because you got to understand, right, that these people who are Acting, I, I, what was the word? It would tell me people portraying portraying themselves as leaders. What was the word? What the word? See, Alness, mm -hmm. um, they they're trying to make themselves to be this or that. Yeah. Uh, 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 if you uh, are, <laughs> if, if you are, if you are believing that you are prime minister material for the next dispensation of the Bahamas, you want to show your backside up, talk to the people one on one with any level of intelligence hey, about the future of life. Show, show up, up man. and show up. Show up. Show, show up, up and show up. Okay? And that's what I'm saying to you. If you are a current candidate or the leading candidate, I, you know, while I wait for the leadership to come out of hiding, I will accept one-on-one -on -one debate with every single person who intends to offer themselves. If you intend to offer yourself for whatever constituency, I will accept that. What I'll do is I'll practice my, my beat down on you, so when your leader could see. But I'm simply saying, you're the leader. You're the one with the vision. You're the one driving the car for the party and the one to drive for the country. Woo. Don't run, don't duck, don't hide. Bring. Listen, you cannot, you you cannot say, duck OSP Media in this. OSP Media, we can, be put, we can be putting this together. When you see Operation Stop in Bahamas, say, see Alan Johnson coming. Look, okay, I don't, listen, see Alan. I know some of them could be shown they run it. I've seen it. Many of these people can be shown in the middle of running. So if you see them running in that direction, Bahamas, you can't vote for them. We too serious, we in such a critical time. Um, Grand Motherfoot, is, is Rome burning? Are we in a critical place right now, Grand Motherfoot? You've been in a critical place. I'm looking, hey, I'm looking, looking for the fact. Hold on, hold on, Grand. Hold on, see you, Alan. Oh. Go ahead, Grand. on Corona where he says, we've known about the pandemic from November. My God. I have this on a video clip from ZNS from the first address he ever made on Corona. So if you've known from November, and I've known from November because my cousin is a teacher in China for the last five years. Yes. So he'd been in mask way before January. But in January, I ask, what is the plan? Not for the virus. Some get dead, some can live. But what about the livers? The people who, who make it through? What's the financial plan? And do you realize the radio talk shows told me that the issue of the day in January was plastic bags, spousal rape, and marijuana. So I'm probably going to call him because I'm really tired of calling that show anyway this week. And I'm going to say, you know what? Why don't get your plastic bag, put some marijuana in it, and carry it home to avoid spousal rape? Because the issue and the time to have set in play a plan would have been January. Because people in the straw market told me they had contact with cruise ship, petri dishes uh, of infection, as we now know. They had contact over the whole holidays before January. And they had flu in that uh, uh, straw market, they say someone dead. People had this burning in the chest and couldn't get rid of this flu. Well, what that was? And we say we ain't had no case of corona, but then we only tested what, X amount of people. Jamaica doing better than us, though. They only got 700 cases out of 3 million people, but they only tested 700 people. So it's 100% infection rate. You see, they're not talking the truth. And so we were corona-free. And I got I to gotta tell you this because it really bugs me. We were corona-free for 21 days. We didn't have no cases, right? Mm -hmm. And so our local economy was... Just, we wasn't free. We didn't have any... We didn't test to find anybody show up with symptoms. <laughs> The well, there you go. Again, but we, we, so, so, so we had we had coronavirus running all through the town all the time. Yeah, but we opened. Up, yes, we opened. We had nobody with symptoms. The local, the local economy was starting to thrive. We were pr protecting brick and mortar, and it started to thrive. And then we go and send Bahamas Air to bring some corona. I mean, that was insane. That was criminal. And now you're shut down with no money, and you got a pandemic. Let's see. Um, he could not be. He could not have. Uh, Bahamas are sitting now without making no money. 
So he had to go import coronavirus. Well, you should have taken Bahamas there and let Bahamian fly to all out islands just for fun for twenty dollars. You know, at least you'd have had it moving. Now <laughs> yeah, Bahamas are shut down now, eh? No, here's the problem. Eighty percent of our currency comes from foreign. So recirculating money inside the economy is not a real economy. Borrowing money to pay civil servants and have that in the economy is not real money. This is the problem we have with borrowing. We have been borrowing money, but we have done nothing to generate money to pay for the money we have borrowed. This is why behemoths have not been developed. This yeah. is why we have no economy except the pimp game for where we were prostitutes, the labor being prostituted, we had a plantation economy. See, let me talk, uh, just to say, and I hear people all the time say, we need to diversify the economy and we need to get out of tourism. Garbage. If you understand that hospitality is the 10th largest industry in the world, then you would understand that we only had one horse in a 1,000 horse race. Our horse got injured because we didn't own it actually, we was betting on it. And so now we don't have any horse in the race. What we have to do is we have to diversify ourselves into something that we're supposed to be good at. We used to offer sun, sand, sea, and service. Sun. We no longer offer service. And so what, I have to, what we have to do is service is the new social contract of the 21st century that COVID in. Ooh, we are now Jesus, in the man. digital revolution. We are now in the third technology revolution. We are in the fourth industrial revolution, and we are in the fifth social revolution. And so when you begin to look at the multiplexity of the hospitality industry, since we have the infrastructure, since we have the brand and the reputation, it's now time for us to diversify into tourism the way it is, into hospitality. This time, it requires ownership. And because you have the brand and the reputation, financing that becomes easy. And My because God. if you want a few million dollars, if you want a few million dollars, it sits in the office of the prime minister called Crown Land that is worth maybe a trillion dollars or more. All we have to do at the next sitting at the House of Assembly on September night, bring a sovereign wealth fund bill that gives and takes away the influence of parliament and the influence, I mean, when I say parliament, I mean the politics of the prime minister office, put it as an independent sovereign wealth fund with a sovereign asset management. We could just reasonably ask $50 billion like that to go and build. Transfer, all the time, transfer crown land that sits in the office of the prime minister that's prostituted into the sovereign wealth fund, and we will have 50 to 100 million dollars, 100 billion dollars on an instant. Now, here's the point we also, and, and we also must have a land registry to give account for the missing, for the missing land out of the office of the Prime Minister. Oh, come and on, at the same time, At the same time, we must cancel out the legalized theft as defined by the, by the Privy Council called the Quiet, the Quiet Titling Act. Yes, yes. Three things. Three things you could do on the night to solve this economy. Forget, we'll, we'll build after we get the resources. You can't build unless you have the resources. How do you go to an empty lot and talk about your building house, you got no brick, no cement, no wood, no nothing. Well, I'm telling you, on the night, they bring a sovereign wealth fund bill that surrenders crown land, all of it, known and unknown, into that sovereign wealth fund with a oh, sovereign come on. asset management to run it. Bring a, a, a land registry bill and bring a repeal of the Quiet Titling Act. And we will yes. begin the building of this country. Save the bull, sis, the BS. Let me say this too. Mr. Brave Davis, you sit in the House of Assembly with a salary that we pay you as leader of a majesty opposition. You're supposed to have the intellectual capital that exists to 
48 years of co-governance in this country called the Progressive Liberal Party. If you are the leading prospect for the country in the next leadership, I challenge the Progressive Liberal Party to bring that bill. Not the one that you all brought, the last sovereign wealth fund. I challenge you to bring a real sovereign wealth fund bill. I challenge you to bring a bill that will repeal the Quiet Tiling Act. And I challenge you to bring a bill that will, that will allow for land registry to happen in the Bahamas so people can begin to pay their real property tax. Because every year, $500 million goes uncollected in real property taxes. It's time for us to stop pretending. And for you, and, and for you identity politics and you political gang members, if you want to survive this post-COVID, if you want the security for your family, if you believe in a future for behemoths, yours and all behemoths, it's time for you to surrender your colors. It's time for what's called the collective of behemoths to reclaim this country. There Adrian. is possibilities in the collective acting of behemoths. Put away the colors. Mr. Brave Davis, whoever you are watching, give him this. Bring those three laws, and I promise you, we will hold whoever votes against it accountable. And the next earliest event, election, we will make sure that you continue what you started. That's all. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Go ahead, Adrian, while that is 100%, I agree, and it's accurate, what CLN says, the rich, PLP and FNMs that have a lot of land, Ain't gonna let that happen because they don't want to be taxed. But let me show you something real quick. I want to build on what C. Allen. Are we asking? Oh, no, no, Grant, stop, 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 Grant, stop. I'm not gonna allow you to dismiss what I say. Please stop it. We are asking right. not the rich PLP. We're not asking. We're asking the person who's seeking to become prime minister, Mr. Brave Davis and his team. See, I'm saying yeah. to you, if he can't, we'll judge him on his inability. But please, don't, 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 okay. don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. Okay, about, okay. Are you, are you, are you, are you, um, 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 Graham, on the point of water, we have to uh, we have to take up the table. Um, go ahead, Graham. Okay, but if I have a lot of land, I won't go and vote against myself. But let's move on. What what I'm looking at is. But Graham, Adam you're Cole. doing it again, Graham. Oh, oh, Graham, oh, 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 Graham. 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 How many of them? Point, point, no, no, no. point of water, Seattle. Point of point water. Point of water. No, I'm saying no, no, no. See, see, because Graham always do this. No, I'm not. No, the Graham. We talking sense now, man. Tell me how much of those rich people votes for a bill in the House of Assembly. Tell me. How much Come on, man. Many. Text me None. 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 Okay. Okay. Go I'm ahead, talking go ahead, to the members of Parliament, Graham. Continue. Yes. Don't, don't, None. don't. Go ahead. Go ahead. Save, Continue, your, save your smash, you know. man. We're talking sense now. I know. So go, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Graham. Next election, I'll see. Now, I want to weigh in. And see, again, there Seattle you go, saying. Graham, with your Hold BS on, Next election. Seattle. Come on. We're talking about on the 9th of September. Seattle. Seattle, leave the sarcasm and leave the cynicism. Okay. This, this That's what I'm telling him. Leave it. I don't want. To, I'm saying to you. I don't have time. No. Listen to me, man. My country, my house is on fire. And if Graham yeah. has, has, has has cynicism, keep it. We're talking okay. about fixing okay. and putting out the I, fire, I, man. It's, Let's go. It, it is struck on the record. It is struck on the record. Go ahead, Graham. Scratch from the record. I agree with C. Allen, but I'm, I'm also a bit cynical. But we'll see. And, but I want to talk about this tourism. What C. Allen said is 100% correct. You're not going to see those big hotels open up and boom. Because of social distancing, which is going to be here for a while, you're not going to be able to feed 3,000 people in a big hotel. The restaurants just weren't built for eight feet apart tables. And so what's going to thrive is, like you said, in a digital or conceptual world where people are going to come, they're going to st – let me show you. you. You from Bimini or you've been to Bimini, right, um, Adrian? I'm from Bimini. That's right. Jeff Davis told me. And so you ever seen a big hotel like on uh, Cable Beach or Paradise Island in Bimini? Never. But you all made a gang of money from tourism, eh? Yes. And, and did the money leave the country and go back to South Africa and all over the place, or did it stay in Bimini? It stayed in Bimini. It stayed in Bimini. You own, you own the hotel. You own the restaurant. You own the, the taxi, the golf cart, the fishing. You owned every part of tourism. Now, how could you leave Bimini and come to Nassau and talk, but you can wait for $350 a week in one big slave that ship? That was tourism. true. We're making the bed. That's not true anymore. Model. That's not true. The new model. That's talking about yesterday, man. Model. Yes, it's, it's duplicated. What? Spanish Wales is going to move from fishing to, to, um, uh, to tourism because ABCO is None. mashed up. 
none of those things we're talking about in the past exist anymore. Listen to me. COVID exactly. introduced, COVID introduced not a new world order. COVID introduced a new order of the world. COVID introduced what I expect to reach in 2025 and 2030. COVID introduced a new order of the world. What you believe existed no longer existed. The, the McKinsey and Company, the leader of my, the, the president of, of, of Microsoft, the uh, Michael Dell, the leader of the Economic Council, uh, 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 the, uh, the World Economic Forum, and all of these CEOs said the world is moving at one year per month into the future. So Jesus. that means in the last six months, we are now at 2026. We can't talk about 2019 or 1973 or whatever. We must now build in the future. Forget the date on your calendar. The Bahamas must now build the Bahamas of the future today. My okay? God. And for those who do not know what the future look like, the landscape for which you have to build, get the F out of the way for those that do. This boat is about to go down. We have no time for the arrogance of ignorance. We have no time for paralysis of analysis. And we have no time for paralysis through analysis. We must get to building. Okay? This is no more talk. There is thousands of people in the matter of weeks that will be homeless. I'm talking about thousands of families because landlords yes, want their money. Yes, sir. Because banks want yes, sir. their mortgages. There are tens yes. of thousands who will be hungry. There are thousands are without job and without hope for the future. This is not time for cynicism. This is no time for pretending and, and doing this. We no need builders on board. Okay? And so I'm simply saying is, don't come to me with no book of ideas. I need solutions. Don't tell me and my house on fire and you want to conceptualize what, what bucket and what tub and whatever you're going to bring. Bring the bucket. Bring the wall. Okay? Please. I don't want to talk about the fire. I want to put the fire out. I my want God, to build God. a shelter. I want to build the future. I want to protect my children that is al that's alive today. I want to have a place for those to be born to be able to right have now. comfort and the security. Right now. Please. Right now. I want to know what you did yesterday. Right I want now. To know what you're going to do today. I want right to know now. how you're going to build tomorrow, today. And so, for I, I'm just so tired of us talking things to death. Paralysis of analysis. We just analyze and analyze and analyze. We keep sending people whose ambition has been greater than their ability. Judge My God. Mind. You understand? Ideas is the currency of the future. My God. Data is the grease that rolls it. You My God. All you have to do is look at all the companies in the world Ooh. today, and they run on the knowledge economy. They run on the digital economy. They run from the conventional yes. economy. I'm saying to you, this garbage about you need to have experience? No. Ask the billionaires and millionaires today what experience they had. They knew. They had ideas for the future. And they created it. I'm saying to you, the collective intelligence in the Bahamas is greater than any one individual out there in the world today. And so I'm saying to you, as long as we remain separated by colors and talk, 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 we will perish as a country. We have the resources. I just told you where the billions of dollars is. I don't even need to touch the aragonite. I ain't touch the oil. I ain't touch the salt. I ain't touch the air. I ain't touch the mangroves. I ain't touch the flats. I ain't touch none of those. I'm talking about the immediate. Right now, today, we can leverage the crown land in a position that we won't lose a dime. Let me tell you something. I just, give me one more minute, Adrian. Let me tell you something. When, if you get the $50 billion dollars, and I lend you the money to build that hotel. If you don't pay me back for that hotel, who do the hotel goes back to? It goes back to you. Because That's it's right. your money you're letting yourself. 
That's right. It's time for ownership. This is no time for us to talk. What are what is time for? Hold on, what is time for? What is time for? What is time for? 1973 don't exist anymore. We are now what is the time for? Okay. What is the time for? time for us to leverage who we are. The My Bahamas. God. Geolocation. My God. We need to leverage our infrastructure. We need to leverage the resource and the most powerful thing. Oh, for a sovereign country. We need to leverage our people. Oh, we God. We have the resources. Let us be a Why sovereign nation. We have a nation with so much wealth. Oh, give us a sovereign nation. Living belt. in poverty, man. Whatever madness are we are. How could you as a bohemian live in such filth and brag about the house you live in? Inside of this country is filth. You are living in poverty. They say every working man, woman, and child in this Bahamas takes home 60000 a year. If you don't take home your 60000 and you praising and jumping for these parties, then you're a fool. You deserve it. That's right. My God. How are you going to have somebody say, this is your paycheck, 60000 but he has 200 a week? What type of mom My is God. Is? And you're celebrating. Look at Jamaica. Look, look, look at you. Look at Jamaica. Look at those people. Those guys that you're laughing at is running your hotel that you're supposed to own. They running your Come bus on. to foreigners that you compare yourself. The Bahamas is this, Bahamas is that. What the Bible says, what man will have their child ask for bread and give them a stone? Come on. Come on. Come on. How, what is wrong My with God. Us? My God. It's time for us to wake up, Bahamas. My wake God. Up. Do not let politics, religion, superstition, Rumors and stupidity keep us as prisoners of self-imposed prison. Don't. My God. This is time. COVID has given us a reboot. Let's build a better Bahamas, one of ownership. We have to understand that. Let's build. Please, Bahamas, let's do this. Political parties are dead in the Bahamas. I declare and decree that political parties are dead in the Bahamas and we are looking for leadership. It's time. My God. Make the sound of the cross, everybody. R.I.P. R.I.P. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, political parties. You know, if you, if you was a preacher, see, I'll, I'll give you the eulogy. But you ain't a preacher. If you was a preacher, I'd give you the eulogy. <laughs> I love my country. I love my people, man. That's it. <laughs> And it's time for us to stop pretending. You know, sovereignty, sovereignty is such an amazing thing. When you, when you understand the value of sovereignty, it changes your whole perspective on leadership. It changes your whole understanding of where you could be and what you could do as an individual. People, own your identity. Own your island. God is sovereign. Own your industries. You <laughs> own your investment. God is sovereign. You want to sovereignty? Oh, Look at God. Look at God. Oh, yeah. You better stop it. Understand this. Stop it Jesus today. Jesus came stop and it showed today. us with sovereignty. Yes, you know. He saw us. The devil offered him the kingdoms of the world and he exercised his sovereignty. Understand. My God. See? All right, people. Sovereignty let go is being able to decide. See? So I'm simply saying to you is don't declare sovereign and you don't own nothing. My you God. The country that you say you are off and from. Don't don't do it. You're lying first you know, to yourself, and then you're lying to others. Can you imagine you and I were doing, we were doing we were doing Live Up TV at the time, and uh, doing these shows on sovereignty, and everybody called us retarded and crazy. Uh, you know, yep. I felt stupid when we, <laughs> they call us retarded and crazy, right? When we started to touch BPL, they started call me. Uh, it's just so it's so amazing that COVID nineteen comes, and COVID nineteen becomes the uh, the uh, reveals the everything. <laughs> yeah, just be busy every day. Call me that. Yeah, the I'm going to put, so I'm going to put what say you. You declare, you declare sovereignty, right? Uh-huh. And what do you own? And you declare common wealth. Yes. Wealth belongs to someone else. You say, you say sovereignty, but you all swear to the queen. My God. It's all a see? joke. I, no, I, no, I, see? Call from Morpheus. No, no Graham. I see people swear to the Bible and still do crap. So don't tell me what is swearing to the oh, queen. Yeah. I'm saying yeah. to you is that today, you'll swear an oath to yourself. And whatever is wrong, we will seek to change. Right. We will receive you know, you know, whatever. See, I think, Graham, I don't want to talk about what happened yesterday. 
I'm telling you what is happening going forward. We as a nation. I tell you, I tell you this, Alex. I tell you this. Ben, Ben, the mom. I, I, I tell you this, Alex. Let me pick it up off the ground. When we did this, right? It's finally dawned on me when we did this. Um, in the last march, right? No more lies. And it dawned on me when we came back. When we having the um the, the post mortem. You know the greatest lies have not been told to us. The greatest lies it will be told ourselves. Absolutely. And Amen. Uh, you you got you got to get to the place where you stop lying to yourself. You shake up on the back of these trucks, showing all your panties in PLP outfits, FNM outfits, and now even in DNA outfits. You keep telling yourself these lies. And the lies you're telling yourself are the lies that cause you to go further and further from your sovereign right. You gotta own your own your identity first. You ask them about the Ragonite. You ask them about the 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 the, the, the fish and the the, the air space. You can't tell but they lying to you with that. You lying to yourself for who you are. You need to identify who you are. The day you show up to your to thy own self be true, man. You got to find out who you are first. And you know, and Adrian, 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 you're absolutely correct. Remember I said to you, identity politics? Identity politics causes you to lose your identity. Because you say, I am a PLP. I am an FNM. I am a DNA. Wait a minute. When did you become a political party? My no, God. You don't, support, you don't support a party. You are a party? My God. See, I'm a PLP. You lost your identity. Own your identity. Own yourself. I am C. Allen Johnson. This is the philosophy I believe in. This is why I'm doing what I'm doing. My Even God. though I believe in the philosophy, I believe that this leader has the vision. Oh, go ahead, yeah, go no, that's go identity ahead, go ahead, politics. Yes, that's what a gang, that's what a gang, enter a gang, it does the same thing to you. Boy, that's because you're going to lose your identity. So it's time for but us you know to know what I tell you, I'll tell you right now. I tell you, I tell you right now what I declare. I am the revolution. <laughs> I, 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 I am the revolution. And so if, if it sounds silly, if it sounds crazy, I may not be a PLB. I may not be an FNM. I may not be a DNA. But I show as hell, I am the revolution. Keep looking and over you your shoulders. Right. And guess what, Adrian? You're absolutely correct. You must become the revolution. You must become the change that you want to see. Yes. Okay? And I so am the revolution. If you don't see the change, if you don't see change in you, how could you expect change in the country? That's right. You man. can't keep doing the same thing every day and say today I will have a different result. That's a sign of I am the revolution. I, I am, am the, the revolution. I am the change I want to see in the world. Those of you who have not done it yet, change your picture to I am the revolution. You want to see the change? Start with your identity. Start with who you are. Own your identity, own your islands, own your industries, own your investments. You got to begin to change your identity. You have to know who you are. Stop letting people turn you into an image that makes them powerful. You're showing all your drawers. And at the end of the day, you didn't cut up all the shirt in the dress. You didn't do all the foolishness. And at the end of the day, you are still further ahead than where you started. They, they changed their phone number right after they get elected. They didn't even know you. They didn't even care about you. Your lights still off. Your water still off. Oh, but I was born a BLB. I will die a BLB. You were born a Bahamian. You are born a child of God. Stop doing foolishness. I am the revolution. I see how they, they, when I when they say it, right? It, it started to go so smooth. I went to the pool the other day. Somebody said, hey, Mr. Revolution. <laughs> Boy, you know how good that sounded? It sounded different. Mr. Revolution. Why? We can shape the course of history in this country by believing that our crown land, our crown land belongs to us. What do you call the Sea Island? Sovereign Wealth Fund. Sovereign Wealth. Commonwealth. Listen to me, please. 70% of the population is under the age of 40 in this Bahamas or by the next election. And I ask you parents and your grandparents, I want you, and you say, we are a, a, a nation that so subscribe to Christian principle. I want you parents and I want your grandparents. The 80% of the humans don't own home or land in this country. I want you to answer yourself this question. The Bible states this. Don't, don't get mad at me. It says, a wise man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Not your children, your grandchildren. My God. My I God. want you to stop for a moment 
and ask yourself, if you were to close your eyes tonight, what would you leave for them besides debt? We already have a national debt for them on their back. A wise man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Then I'm saying to you, for all of you that have children that they call millennials, born between 1980 and 1995, for all of you who have children of Gen Z, Gen Z born between 1985 and 210, and for all of you who have children born from 210 to forward, who have, uh, they call it uh, the uh, 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 Generation Alpha, I say to you, what are you leaving for them? What are you leaving for your grandchildren? What are you leaving for your children to build for your grandchildren? If you own nothing except the identity of a political party, and you're going to leave it, do you realize that people say, my grandmother was a, P, was a PLP, an FNM, or whatever. My, my mommy was, and I was. They left you an inheritance of an identity, a political identity. But you don't own your house. You don't own your business. That's why so many of us are sitting in distress. Because we don't own our home. We, we worry about the landlord. We worry about the mortgage. We don't own our businesses. We are J-O-B-S. We're looking for jobs. We are sitting in our house today as just over broke suckers in a just over jobs. System. Jobs. So I'm saying to you, jobs. what are you leaving? You can't leave. You leaving an identity of a PLP, FNM, and our DNA or whatever for your children? You're not going to leave them land? You're not going to leave them home? You're not going to leave them generational wealth? you live in them a state of poverty, a national debt on the back of your grandchildren who have yet to be born? I'm talking to you millennials and you Gen Z and all of y'all who claim to know. I can have a talk on that same conversation about youth, okay? But I'm saying to you, what is your strategy for your, born, your children or your grandchildren or your unborn? Tell me. Tell me how you see a part. Don't tell me some fantasy because one guy named... Zuck, uh, Mark Zuckerfield or whatever else made it. Tell me the truth. What do you say? What do you say on Zuckerfield? Mark Zuck, Zuckerfield. <laughs> because he can just ask all these people to just sit all day and use and just talk. So I'm simply saying is this. Unless you have a personal strategy for your personal economy and it comes with leadership, you only, you only dreaming and fantasizing. You're no different than the guy who sat for 40 years hoping to win the lottery and never bought a ticket. Now, for those of you who allowed the pulpit pimps, the political prostitutes, and whatever else you call them, and the parliamentary pirates, whatever else you want to call them, that allows you to sell them on this faith and hope. Let me yes, say sir. You, there's a man named Mark Smith who, who got up every morning and for 40 years he prayed to God. God, please, let me win the lottery. And he had his pastors and others told him to just have faith. And after 40 years, do you know the heavens opened and God said to John Smith, how do you expect to win the lottery if you never bought a ticket? His Ooh, pastor never Jesus. told him to buy a ticket. Nobody, they kept telling him, have faith, have faith, have faith. See, you have been led astray and misled. I'm saying to you, don't let them sell you a future without a ticket. You can't redeem the ticket. You can't redeem the future unless you have the ticket. The ticket is the vision, the blueprint that you personally don't let me don't don't talk about what you know the success of this one or two percent in the country and tell you that they made it. Nobody made it in the Bahamas by themselves. Let me let me give you another example. All of these people who say lift themselves up by their by their own bootstring, it's a lie. I want you to believe, you believe that, stand in the bucket and try lifting yourself. All right, See, go ahead. Nobody, in this country, nobody in this country made it by themselves. Look at the millionaires in this country or billionaires if there's any and ask them, how many of them paid for the road by themselves? How many of them paid for the police force by themselves? How many of them paid for the harbor patrol by themselves? How many of them build the electrical infrastructure? How many, see, this garbage about being self-made, it is, they just sell you this. We built them because we paid for the road. We paid for the harbor. We paid for the policemen. We paid for the doctors. We 
pay for the education institution. We. So don't let them sell you on this garbage that they made it by themselves. There's no such thing. The person who made Oof. it by themselves is somebody they call G-O-D. Ain't nobody did it since then. Okay? My so God. My God. Thing. Okay? Thank so, you very much. Listen, I got it. Guys, let's do this. Okay. We did, we did, let me see how much time we did today, because we did a long show today. We got to do this. Um, listen. Uh, it feels like it went quick. It really felt like it went quick. Uh, Graham, you have, um, your, your final words, Graham. My final words? There's two words. One, we need a slogan. A common goal. You know, like, it's a matter of trust and believe. It's the people's time. You put the last 15 years together, it's a matter of trust that you believe it's the people's time. That's your three slogans for the last 15 years. But we need a new one, a common goal. And that common goal needs to be, let's fix the Bahamas, as I always say. And it starts, I mean, everything is wonderful and all these things we need to do, but you can't do them like C. Allen said. Number 11 on a scale of 1 to 10 is having sustainable, affordable energy security. And that's why I've said that for over 20 years with Mike Smith on Love 97 in 1999 before yes. Y2K foolishness. See, Alan wouldn't know about that. And I couldn't believe, he actually told me that. He said, Graham, you know, I've been talking this 20 years. I said, well, now it's time for us to do something. And everything becomes affordable and sustainable, and all that creative, conceptual, and digitization happens with energy. Energy is the, is the new king. And if you have it, and God gave it to you with the sun, Please don't give that away to foreigners, eh? They can own everything, but don't let them own the solar energy sector. Thanks, Adrian. I really appreciate you, Graham. Um, before you go, Graham, I'm, I'm C. Allen, last word. Yes, let me just say, I have, I have two major points. Three, understand that energy and data is the currency of the future. Let's demand it. Secondly, I want you guys to go and find every leader of every political party and tell them to accept C. Allen Johnson challenge of defending the, the current and future Bahamas. Force your leaders to come through me so they can meet the persons above me. The next thing I want people to understand is I want you to call every member of parliament and demand that you have a real sovereign wealth fund bill, namely Dr. Minnis and Brave Davis to bring a bill to parliament to surrender the crown land to that properly constituted sovereign wealth bill. Surrender to the, cr the crown land so we can re recover and rebuild this economy so you don't lose your houses, so your lights don't go off, so your water don't get cut off, so your kids can be properly educated. That's what we need to do today. The crown land, the sovereign wealth fund bill, surrender the crown land and a land registry and repeal of the Quiet Tiling Act. Just pay this back to the end. Let's do this and begin to build a better Bahamas today. Thank you so much, Adrian. Yeah, I should tell you, um, we played this Sea Island over, the, over this nation for, uh, for the last, um, I can't tell you how long we've been doing this crap. Like they're rushing over a mighty wind. That's how quick something has to happen. All of us believe that Rome is burning and that we can't choose which, which, which item we use to out the fire. Bottom line is that we need the fire to be out and we need it out right away. We cannot be deceived going into the next uh, dispensation. We have to decide right now that the Bahamas and the behemoths must benefit from our nation. You can't benefit from your, from your country without understanding that you're a sovereign nation and that you too is sovereign. No one has the right to access this country without your permission. It's time for us to do the Bahamas on our terms. That's all we've been saying, and that's all we've been saying for many, many years. It's time for us to do the Bahamas on our own terms, and that's where we are now. People, I've changed my picture. Will you change yours? I am the revolution. Look for the flyer. Um, if you need it, we'll send it to you. Look for the flyer. I am the revolution. Erica Barr, thank you so much for being on um, the help that you are. Charlotte, thank you for being a good partner. I am the revolution. I am the revolution. I am the revolution. Guys, until uh, while we lock down, we can do it again until we get the message out. Um, any of you want to reach me, the number's here, 698-1046 uh, uh, or 1047. You can call me after the show. 698 1046 or 1047. I appreciate all of you guys. Um, this show is probably one of the more powerful shows we've done in a long time, Seattle. Uh, yeah. I gotta leave, I have to leave you to yourself and free one for a while. Maybe you get some common sense. <laughs> 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 but, 
But listen, we um Graham, Graham, until until later in the week, we'll do it again. All right. Guys, thank you so much. Have a good one. Okay. Thank you, Seattle.